evening, party people, and welcome back to the bar with an X. My name's Cameron, and I'll be your bartender this evening. I'm trying a new intro. How'd that do for you? Was it was it good? Was it good? I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do it the normal way. Just kidding. Good evening, folks. How you doing? So, this week's theme is chocolate. I was inspired the other day while I was doing a little bit of, um, you know, mixological science and whatnot, I say, kind of patting myself on the shoulder. Fat washing is a thing that you can do. If something has fat in it, you can fat wash liquors and spirits and otherwise. I think most notably that I think if you can do like bacon fat washed bourbons, chocolate fat washed bourbon. I actually made some, what we got? I actually made some bacon fat washed Four Roses bourbon because Anna was making some bacon and naturally there was a bunch of fat left over and I was like, wait, don't do anything with that yet. I have an idea. And then I brought over a liquor, liquor bottle and she was like, what is your idea exactly? And I was like, don't worry about it. So I put the whole thing in, you did the process where essentially you take it, you put it inside, you let it cool for a little bit, you put it in the freezer, you take it out, you strain it, and then you get this stuff, which um, last I tasted this, this is the bacon washed. It smells kind of like bacon, just a little, just a tad. And it's got a nice taste of char to it when I uh, when I tasted it the other day. It, it tastes, you can taste the bacon, it's great. Totally different topic. Definitely not the focus of this evening's theme. Although if anybody has ideas or requests out there about bacon washed bourbon or other washed anythings really, hit me up. I'm curious to see what everybody else wants to do or if anybody else knows anything better than I do. I just kind of put bacon grease into the into, into the spirit. Well, not anything else. Oh, thank you for the delivery. Right on schedule, the, uh, the chocolate is what we're talking about this evening. I do actually have some chocolate washed bourbon that is currently sitting in the freezer. Um, I remembered to do that this morning, so I don't think it's completely had a chance to separate yet. I'll pop it over on the cocktail angle just for a hot second over here so everybody can see. This is, this is bourbon, and it's got chocolate inside of it. You can kind of see a layer up on top forming. I don't exactly know how much oil, like cocoa oil or fats were in 60% Ghirardelli cocoa that I melted in my microwave. Um, but I guess we're gonna see. The plan is to use that in a cocktail later on and just to give it the extra like hour or two to sit in the freezer for a little while, we'll strain it out. We'll try to make, I think, a chocolate Manhattan on that. Or if anybody else has ideas, you know, we're open to those as well. But alas, enough, enough about the washing and whatnot. We'll get to the other, we'll get to that at the at the end because I wanna give that as much time in the freezer as possible. What we're gonna start off with around here is just kind of thinking about what chocolate's use is in cocktails. At least when I was going through my list, I thought about the chocolate washing, which is what I did this morning, inspired by the bacon washing thing, uh, fat washing in general. You can also use it as a garnish. Naturally, you take a little chocolate bar, you can, or white chocolate, you can shave it on top of your cocktail, especially as a nice foam on top. It works perfectly. You've got chocolate syrup, which you mix with a little bit of, uh, oh, like a slurp popping in here. Great, at a perfect time. Talking about chocolate milk, you take chocolate syrup, you put it in milk, you can throw vodka in there, and. There you go. That's a way to make it alcoholic. Less kid-friendly, less child-friendly. And what was the other thing I was thinking of? I was thinking of chocolate spirits. Oh, chocolate spirits themselves. In my collection, at least, the only real chocolate spirits that I have are some creme de caco, only the clear stuff. I don't have the, the, the brown stuff yet. And two different Godiva liqueurs, one milk chocolate, one white chocolate. And so we'll get to those as well, because I want to explore that. I really don't do much chocolate stuff here. It's mostly a lot of fruits and whatnot, but uh, but uh, I, I actually like chocolate stuff very much. So we're going to go on that one. Like is popping in here saying, and Lycos Raid! To greetings to all of the Raiders. Uh, for those of you who don't know, my name is Cameron. The X is silent on my name. It might have had you confused. It gets me confused sometimes too. Typing typing can be weird. You know, when you go to the grocery store, my name is Cameron. <laughs> or the, what is it? Not the grocery store. I don't show your name at the grocery store. You go to like Wendy's or something. I'm like, can I have a name for that? And you're like, Cameron with an X. And they're like, all right, dude. It's not my actual rename. Yet, maybe. So we're going to start things off here with, I guess, the, 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 the when I was thinking of what we do this evening, it was like, I'm a little tired from the day. It's been, it's been wild. Work has been wild recently. So we're going to start off with something caffeinated. Because coffee, when I think of coffee and chocolate, I think of, oh, so wonderful, wonderful things. So what we're going to do is going to start off with a recipe over here called the Ferrer Rocher Espresso Martini. Ferrer Rocher being hazelnut. I'm going to have to look back at this. I don't know how to spell that. Ferraro. Fer... Ferrero, Ferrero, Rocher, Ferrero Rocher, Ro, Shay, and the accent is in the uh direction, uh, and then espresso martini, espresso, espresso, it's Italian, I'm Italian, but not as Italian as most other Italians, I'm like 
fourth generation, I guess. That's a long ass name. Better be damn good for all the time you spent writing it. Martini. It's a it's an N at the end. Me. Me. We are the knights who put me in our martins. Martins E. What Anna just bought for, brought for me actually up here is this 70%. Whoa, hello. This 70% block of cocoa, cocoa paste, sugar, and cocoa butter. This probably would have been better to put into the to the bourbon. And um, I did a really small batch of that. I'll probably do a bigger one later. This stuff, like, this stuff's so good. It smells a little bit like tobacco. It's a really good thing of chocolate. When we when we garnish this cocktail, we'll use some of this chocolate because this is quality, quality cocoa. I'll put that off to the side over here. Please don't let me forget about that. I hopefully will not. So what was I saying? Ferrer Rocher. Ferrer Rocher, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Ferrara Rocher or Ferrara Rocha. Ferrasha, for those who are cool, I guess, is a hazelnut type of chocolate. I think I remember having a bunch of, there was, <laughs> my mother's refrigerator is very oddly organized. And there is in the same drawer, in the same like set of drawers, there are cold cuts and chocolates. I think they are either occupied the same drawer once upon a time, or they might just be like right on top of each other. But if you opened up one drawer, I always remember when I was a kid, if I was either gonna go for the Baby Bell cheeses, or the Ferrero Share chocolates, or the cold cuts, I'd be like one drawer, like, nope, it's not that one. This one, oh, those are the Baby Bell cheeses. And then they're like, there's my cold cuts, or there's my chocolates and stuff. Um, but we always had these little, they're the little, um, they're the little chocolates. I don't actually have one here, otherwise I'd show it off. They're the little chocolates that come in the little brown, little, that looks like the bottom of them. Looks like a little like Hershey cup or a Reese's cup, but it's tiny and it's got the gold foil on top with the sticker on it. Those are the ones that like, they kind of look like tiny little spiky balls. And when you bite them, they've got the hazelnut on the inside and like the chocolate, milk chocolate on the outside. And there's like a little like crumbliness to it too. That's the, that's my history. That's my uh, biology lesson on a, a Ferrero share. The, the, the whole biology of a Ferrero share. I see. I'm going to stop saying Ferrero share. I'm getting myself tripped up there. The other part of this one is obviously the espresso part. It's a Ferrero share espresso martini. So you break that down. Essentially you have coffee, you have hazelnut and you have chocolate all together in the form of a martini. You can use vodka in this. This recipe calls for vanilla vodka. I don't have vanilla vodka. I think the recipe called for that a week or two ago as well. And I just never went out to buy it. So shucks however i do have whipped vodka and that's just gonna have to take the place here for the most part they, what else is in this cocktail is we have usually you would use frangelico hazelnut liqueur that is like the de facto hazelnut liqueur that i'm aware of i don't actually have any frangelico i personally love this other liqueur that i use uh it's called evangelines and it is a praline liqueur so it's not hazelnut it is uh pecan it's a pecan liqueur. This is something that the story, the story of getting this, if Lycos is still out there, he remembers when we went on a journey trying to find this particular liqueur. It was a few years ago. We're on vacation with my family down in South Carolina. Always wonderful times there. And this was when I was really first started getting into like the real, the, the deep weeds of mixology and really started taking a liking to the, the whole craft of it all. And I was like, I remember seeing in one of my cocktail books, specifically the Bartender's Black Book by Cunningham, second edition, one cocktail called for praline liqueur. And I flipped to the page and I was like, huh, praline liqueur, that exists. And I flipped away from it. But in my passing of it, I was like, God, I want praline liqueur. Where do you get praline liqueur? I was like, we're down south. They've got to have pralines down here. There's definitely praline liqueur down here. And I was like, I swear praline liqueur exists. And I started flipping through my book, flipped through my book for like minutes on end. I was like, I can't find the recipe that uses this. But I know praline liqueur li uh, exists out there. Did a little bit of Googling. This brand Evangeline's popped up. And I was like, I have no idea where to get this. So I'm like, we're going to go on a little adventure. So we kind of walk down the the kind of the, the the sidewalked highways of Hilton Head Island, going to liquor stores to try to see if they had it. Really, it wasn't as adventurous as it might have seemed to be. I, I mentioned it in passing to my mom, who also used to be a bartender. She's like, "Yeah, I called up one of the local stations, and they got like uh, you know they got like five bottles of them. If you want to go pick some up," and I was like. Dope. So we walked all the way down. I was like, take think a two mile long journey as we were on our way to somewhere else. And I picked up like two bottles of this stuff. And I think we actually went through one of these already. This is a, this is something that Anna really, really likes. She is a huge fan of just taking these little pralines, just shaking it with some ice and pouring it out. You just aerate it a little bit, kind of gets a, kind of lightens in color a bit because you just put a bunch of air bubbles in it. She loves this stuff. I'm in no way sponsoring this. It's just been in my life for a couple of years now. And evidently it has superseded the need for me to ever get Frangelico. So that's what we're going with there. I see Harry popping in there saying, good evening, Cameron. Always forge. It's a Wednesday night until I see the Twitch notification. Oh, wonderful. I'm glad that you popped in. I don't know how Twitch does those notification stuff. It doesn't go out live. Sometimes I get them instantly. Like when my buddy Lycos went up earlier, it came out right at 201. 
and he went live, I think, at exactly 2 o'clock. Uh, meanwhile, this stuff happens. I, I put notifications in our Discord server. There's probably... It's, you really want to know where to go. So long as you remember Wednesday nights at 8 o'clock p.m. EST, you're in the right place. 10 minutes ago. Oh, and we're fine there. Good, thing, good to know that Daddy Bezos is doing that thing properly. So I went on a whole rant about frangelico hazelnut liqueur or something you can use as a stand-in i'm using evangeline's praline it's damn good it tastes like nut and that's all we need specifically pecan type of nut uh, for other types of nut liqueurs ask your father or your local liquor store i'm sure you'll get differing answers i'm sure the other piece of this is godiva chocolate liqueur it doesn't specifically say for this particular recipe which i actually got from reddit now that i think about it um it doesn't say what kind of chocolate liqueur but i got the milk chocolate. We also have the white chocolate chocolate liqueur from Godiva. We'll be going into that one later. There's not really, you don't really sub out the white for the chocolate or the dark. If I had the dark, I'd probably be going for that because, oof, I'm a sucker for dark chocolate. I love that stuff very much. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. I actually got this one from Reddit a while ago. I added this to my little like repertoire recipe stuff and I couldn't find this user anywhere on socials and whatnot, but hats off to MarcusB97 on Reddit for sharing this wonderful looking cocktail recipe. I was like, I saw that I saw coffee and chocolate and the fact that he mentioned the word Godiva and I was like, I'm sold. I gotta get this thing. Um, so one of the pieces that we need for this as well is some fresh Italian espresso. I don't have Italian espresso. I was not able to make it to the store today to get espresso that would de definitely have been cold by now. So instead, I, I brought up my little Mr. Coffee. Not so Italian. Maybe a Mr. Coffee is espresso. I don't know exactly how far back Mr. Coffee's lineage goes. And we're going to fill it up with some water, pressurize this thing as I continue vamping for the next few minutes or so. And now we're just going to make some espresso. The reason I'm doing this first, naturally, is because I, I didn't have a lot of caffeine today. I, uh, I woke up, I was very tired, got up a little late, had some uh, black tea, black chai tea, and was like, yep, this is my life now. And uh, I was kind of tired today. We got a lot of shit done. Lots of things done. I got a lot of things done. We're working stuff. So I'm going to add, essentially, I don't know if y'all have ever used one of these things before. I use it very rarely. You fill up the very, very pool water smelling tank in the back. Uh, I bought this used at a thrift, uh, as a, at a garage sale, so it smelled like this when I got it. No worries. I sanitized it somehow, and um, here we are now. So I'm just gonna fill this up with water until I feel satisfied, I guess. There's a little, like, bar on the inside that you can kind of use, but no external indicator. Yeah, that's fine by me. I don't really need that much espresso anyway. I'm gonna put my water thing back on. I should probably fill it up a little bit. I was very bad at my water consumption last week. Just top it up back in the back. Screw it on just like that. It says, warning, to avoid injury, relieve pressure before removing cap or brew basket. That's true. With this guy, there's a little like uh, there's a little lever on the side over here that can blow, out, blow off steam quite literally, and that's what you're going to want to use. So what we'll do is before I actually go in and do this, I, I have to do the entire process too. I'm going to make, I'm going to make myself espresso while everybody else watches. Please join me for that journey. I have my little thing here. You got to put some coffee in there. I am not the best at making espresso. I'm not a barista. I'm a mixologist, technically the bartender as it pertains to my little home bar over here. Um, but we're going to need to, we're going to need some coffee. So what I'm going to do first, <laughs> I'm going to unplug the espresso machine. Uh, probably should have done this first is grind up some coffee. It's going to get a little no noisy over here. I was actually really excited about this too, because I don't usually take the time to make myself espresso in the morning. It just really doesn't work in with my particular morning workflow. You're plugged in now. It's also a Mr. Coffee coffee grinder. Um, but when I do have the opportunity to make myself coffee, it's usually an espresso. But this is a perfect excuse to do so. If I make a bunch of espresso tonight, I'm gonna put it in the fridge and I'm just gonna keep it for the next couple of days. Cause it's great. I love fresh made stuff. Also what Anna got me from Guatemala was this awesome, it's called Antigua. Antigua Regional Black Cat Coffee gr uh, Coffee mix. I don't know what they do with it. I was burping a little bit there, excuse me. But it's so tasty. It has, I love this coffee so very much. It is a very, very excellent, I don't know what they do with it. It's all in Spanish. I can't read it very well. If anybody knows Spanish. This one is a, evidently, according to Anna, the low acidity one. It just tastes so good. It's got all the notes that I look for in coffee, which is like a slight sourness, a potent flavor to it. It's great. This kind of tastes like espresso, even when you don't pull it as an espresso shot. It's delightful. Uh, I'm gonna grind this on the most fine settings because when you're doing espresso, you want everything to be very fine and hopefully like, you know, packed all evenly and stuff. I'm not going to accomplish that because I'm not a professional. I'm just a home guy. Anyway, loud sound warning. We're grinding some beans up in here. 
I think. I gotta click a button too for the. Yeah. There we go. Incoming bean grindage. No, it's not turning on. Oh, because I didn't close the thing up properly. Here we go. Grinding the beans. Grinding. It does, it stops automatically, so I was just waiting for the right moment. Did you know coffee in sign language is this? I learned that. This is avocado. You use A and then you scoop. <laughs> Nothing to do with tonight's stream. There are no avocados making an appearance, which makes me very sad now that I think about it because I freaking love avocados. I bet you could probably do fat washed avocado bourbon. Actually, you definitely can because, like, it's got a bunch of avocado oil in it. It's one of the great things about avocado. It's just got a shit ton of oil in it. You could definitely fat wash something with avocado. It's great. Also, random fact, advocat, a spirit, is not distilled from avocados. It's distilled from eggs. Gotta get me some of that. Harry says, we'll add to the sign language collection. Indeed, there we go. There's some useful things there. I've, I've, taught, I've taught various people in this world not very good things in sign language. I'm not a teacher. I'm not licensed to do this. I'm just, I'm just me. So now what I'm gonna do is, as best as I possibly can, I'm just gonna pour my little coffee grounds into into my little, I'm gonna make a little espresso puck here. There we go. There's a ton of, I can see that there's a ton of really large bits in here. So this is not the best done. Uh, if I wanted to, if you wanted to, you could like double strain this using a, a mesh strainer to really get what you're going for here. Um, at least as best as you want, like as close as you can to fine, but I just don't got the time for that. Also, I'm gonna just pour with my right hand because it's my dominant one. And it's a lot less shaky than my left hand. Yeah, I've taught that to others. Oh, yeah, I taught Harry some. Uh, I taught Harry some sign language. Um, taught my brother some sign language. My my youngest brother has also taught me some sign language. It's good stuff. It's a self perpetuating cycle over here. <laughs> Lost in translation, probably. Oh, always. always. Anna knows chocolate. Anna knows chocolate. Oh, Anna knows chocolate and sign language. Would you like to share with the crowd? You make an S sign on your non dominant, and then your dominant make a C. Can I do that with one hand? No. This is almost coffee. This is almost called. You gotta go counterclockwise. You gotta go clock counterclockwise. Did you just look this up on the internet? Yes, I did. <laughs> I okay. found my bald guy. Mm, all right, the bald guy's the guy to go to if you're oh learning sign language. I love the bald guy. So what I'm gonna do is I just gotta I just kind of want to pat this down, try to pack it as much as I can. I'm gonna use a knife because I'm dangerous. I still remember it says Harry. Oh, you do. Would you like to showcase that sign please for us? Please don't. Oh yeah, no, no. Please go no. go ahead, Harry. Show us what the show us what the sign is. It, it's it's hard to do sign language in chat. I wonder, you know, I bet there is definitely a creator out there who, like, has the entire, like, sign, like, alphabet, at least for ASL, like, Can as emotes. Can we do that? Can we do that? No. Yeah. No. Can we at least do, like, the X? I can do the X in sign language. That's a great idea. I don't need every single letter of the alphabet and common words and stuff. But we can you definitely can put an X. X in there. We can put, do an X in there. Put a little symbol of my hand doing the X symbol as an emote. People will be like, what the heck is that? It's X. You could also do a gix, you signing your name with gix. I could, I could. Like, my name is Kimberly. This is also ASL, it's not English, uh, it's not ESL. It's yeah, it's just, it's language. just, it's just American Sign Language. Just, just be Marin American. BSL, Britain, or English Sign Language, I think ESL. There's a lot of, there's a lot of SLs out there. Yeah, I just realized there's a British Sign Language and an English Sign Language. I mean, that kind of makes sense. I mean, it's a, basically a different dialect, too, so. Everything makes sense. Everything is a different dialect, and it's so interesting. Coffee. Ground. Ground coffee on the ground, plugging in the espresso machine now. We're just gonna kind of put that onto on mode. And uh, we're just gonna let that coffee go for a little bit as I combine all the other ingredients as we make the first part of this Ferrero Show cocktail. All right, he says, I think I'd get banned from Twitch if I said what you taught me. Oh, it's, it's easy. <laughs> Y'all can y'all can talk amongst yourselves. You can share that information only if you so please to share it. It's a it's naughty words. It's sexual. I've been told that this means something not very nice. I mean, I guess technically it's nice to some people, but alas, I'm not, I'm not here to teach on that. I'm not the authority to teach sign language. I'm also really not an authority to be teaching mixology either. But as the self-proclaimed novice in the room, we're gonna try our best. So essentially, all I'm doing. I just took the little thing over here. I probably showed this in off before, but I'll show it again. Just to, if anybody else has this Mr. Coffee Machine, there is a little dial on the side right over here, right there. Can we see that? Yeah, and it's a little dial. And uh, on the front, 
If you turn it, pull it back, it's brew. If you pull it the other way, it's gonna release steam out the other side, which I can't show because the angle just does not support that. And if I did so, it's gonna spray steam right into the microphone. And that's not really the way that I wanna be conducting things this time. I don't know if that'll break the microphone or not. I'm gonna very carefully move this off to the side. This is gonna get real freaking hot, so maybe this was not the best idea to do first, but we're gonna do it anyways, because why not? We're a little haphazard around here, that's fun. So what we need else, other than that, is we need a shaker glass. So we're gonna, I'm gonna grab myself a little shaker. I'll start with the, do I wanna start with this guy? This is gonna have hot espresso in it. I don't know if I want a chance with this guy. That one doesn't really seal very well, so I'll go with one of these ones. Yeah, put it with one of those. That'll work out just fine. We're gonna combine everything else in here, and then we'll put the espresso in when it is done. You'll probably be able to see, notice uh, faster than I will, that the espresso is gonna start collecting in that little glass bin down there. It will, I promise. I can hear it making sounds now, and maybe you can too. It's chill, it's whatever. Harry says, uh -huh, we've got a similar color for coffee machines, unless they are just similar and I'm just going, ex going insane. Yeah, no, I'm sure that this, I, I'm sure that Mr. Coffee, I have a lot of faith in Mr. Coffee. I'm sure that Mr. Coffee is a global brand at this point. So what do you need? It says, at least according to your Reddit user, we need to hard shake for 10 seconds with ice, then dry shake, fine mesh strain into a chocolate coated martini glass and top with cocoa powder and crushed hazelnuts. I don't have hazelnuts. I've got, actually I do have hazelnuts. I'm gonna grind it. I'm gonna grind those, that'll be fun. Uh, so the point here is to try to like get as much in there as possible. So we start, it says to start with the ice and then take the ice out. That's gonna be kind of difficult to do. So I think instead what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just put, I'm gonna wait for the ice. I'm gonna do the dry shake first because otherwise the pressure is gonna be a little bit weird. We might spray hot espresso everywhere. Not really what I'm going for. Um, but if it happens, at least we caught it on stream. And the espresso seems to be working right now, so let me get the other stuff and put it in the glass. We are gonna start with 1.5, or about 44 milliliters of our vanilla vodka, or vanilla vodka stand-in. I don't have vanilla vodka, but I do have this Pinnacle Whip vodka, so I'm gonna use that. It's got a very potent flavor. It's very, it is not the same as vanilla vodka from what I've had before. It is a lot more on those whipped cream notes which kind of is vanilla, but cream to me, cream and milk have a different flavor to me than vanilla. So this is not quite the right stand-in, but it's what we got. So that's what we're gonna use. We're gonna add about one and a half milliliters of that. I'm sorry, one and a half ounces, or about 44 milliliters of that into, put it to the big side of the glass. Everything's gonna go to the big side. I don't have any ice right now. Uh, that comes later, evidently, for the dry, for the dry, for the wet sheet afterwards. Harry says, hazelnut is my current go-to with coffee. Oh, ho, 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 a fellow coffee drinker, very nice. I like to take mine black. I don't really put things in it. If I had to pick a go-to though, I love cinnamon on my coffee. Love, love, love cinnamon. So next what we're gonna do is, you could use a Frangelico brand or other brand of hazelnut liqueur, and we're gonna add three quarters of an ounce, about 22 milliliters of that. I don't really have hazelnut liqueur. I really, actually I do have hazelnut liqueur, I think, but I don't really like using it. So I'm gonna use these Evangeline's praline liqueur. It's a pecan the core instead because it just tastes so damn good and i kind of want to see how that goes with the whipped vodka so i'm experimenting with y'all here so thank you for joining me on that so three quarters of an ounce of that or about 22 milliliters it is so syrupy it just hmm. it's like if they like if they allowed me to BYOB at the local IHOP, <laughs> I'd be bringing the Evangeline's Premium Liqueur to put on my pancakes. Screw the maple syrup, old-fashioned syrup, blueberry syrup. I think they also have strawberry syrup. No, no. This is what I want on my pot pancakes. This is great. It's almost like you imbued it with, I guess, not maple syrup. There's no other type of syrup. It's it's delicious. I freaking love this stuff. And Anna loves it, too. Oh, and I actually saw the hazel that liqueur behind it. Like, nah, we're not going to do that. So, again, this is kind of loosely based on the Ferrero share. Espresso martini. It's not really Ferrero share. It's not really hazelnut. No. I have a lot of espresso here, so I'm actually going to move right on with it. Three quarters of an ounce Godiva chocolate liqueur. This is the Godiva milk chocolate liqueur. I'm sure, depending on how you like your chocolate, I suppose, you could do a dark chocolate. They have a dark chocolate version. They have this milk chocolate version. They also have a white chocolate version. I think my favorite is the white chocolate. It's just it's such a nice... I, like, I personally like white chocolate, and I feel like it just goes underutilized in my life, so... That's what I'd like to, that's what I usually go for. I mean, a nice, it goes really well with, um, chocolate flavors I think go pretty well with matcha. Like, matcha goes pretty well with coffee, I think, in my opinion. Uh, and I find that the chocolate flavors go with matcha. There's a, um, a recipe that I came up with, like, over a year ago called a matchocolate sake teeny. 
I haven't done it in a while. I don't really have a lot of sake in this house right now, but eventually I'll wind up going back to it. It's it's all right. Rye popping in here saying, howdy, barkeep. Well, howdy there, Rye. How are you doing this fine, wonderful evening? If you need to pick me up, I got fresh espresso ready. We got fresh coffee for you. Now, without burning myself, I'm going to turn off this device. We're now at the off switch. I'm going to let that dribble for a little bit so that I don't make a mess. Although we're going to make a little bit of a mess. Ah, whatever. You know, I need, a, I need an ounce of espresso. If you have freshly made espresso, feel free to add an ounce to your shaker. That's what we're going to need. And then we're going to dry shake. So um, this is going to get hot. This is going to get hot and potentially messy. And hopefully if I can move that fast enough, I'm not going to burn my finger. I'm going to make the rest of the espresso in here because I'm going to use this in the morning. The bottom side of the jigger so that we don't burn ourselves. No, I spilled a little bit. I spilled a little bit of the nectar. Damn. I think they'll be all right. That was a full ounce, by the way, like 30 milliliters or so. Rye says, is anyone else getting a weird echo or sound artifacting? Oh, it's the espresso machine. It's the espresso machine. Yeah, sorry about that. It's very, very close to the microphone. Let me, let me, let me try. If I bring the microphone up here. We'll try that for a little bit. Mr. Coffee can go talk to himself for a little while. So we have, so far... Whipped vodka, or vanilla vodka, that's what the recipe calls for. Hazelnut liqueur, I used pe pe pecan liqueur, because that's what I have here. Godiva chocolate liqueur, that's actually for real. We actually have that in here. And a full ounce of the freshest Italian espresso that I could get my hands on. The beans are from Guatemala, and I am an Italian, so that's the stand-in that I'm going to keep with for at least this evening, as I get slightly jacked up on caffeine as we continue the rest of the stream. This is cocktail number one. There's multiple this evening, as there always is. So first, according to our instructions here, we're going to dry shake this first. Usually you do this with like an, like an egg white to emulsify the egg to make like a nice froth up on top. Apparently we're gonna do this with the espresso. We're gonna get this, get, it, get this nice and agitated. Because it's really hot on the inside, there is going to be an inverse pressure differential that we're going to experience here. So we have to keep this really, really tight so it doesn't go everywhere. And so I save myself from potentially hot espresso. This is, this is warm. This is very warm. It's not super duper warm. There's a bunch of other cold stuff in there. So I think we'll be all right. But I'm, I'm dry shaking that just for the time being. And I'm not gonna let go because you gotta keep on this or else it is going to start sprouting everywhere. And I just made this espresso. I'm supposed to shake this for like 10 seconds or so. So that's the 10 seconds that I'm gonna give to that. Why is a naked woman on horseback the inspiration for a chocolate brand? Honestly, I don't really know. Why was the why was the little girl who's having her swim trucks pulled down by a dog the inspiration for children's sunscreen? Like, I, I don't know what you've been sniffing out there, Coppertone, but uh, that is not the type of cell that I, you know, I was gonna make a statement about like what sells, you know what sells. And I don't like that connotation of what normally sells. And that on the sunscreen bottle, I just want to make sure I don't get killed by the sun, you know? Like, skin cancer is not cool, and neither is sunburn, very generally speaking. All right, so we shook that. So now it's been dry shaken. It's gotten a little frothy in there. Let me show you the froth. Show you the froth. It's, it's, it's a real froth, I promise that. Real froth. Real froth action happening here. Real froth action. Take a look at that froth. Anyways, I'm glad that you believe me now. A man of my word. Proof is in the pudding. And by what pudding, I mean espresso. The pressure is building. More espresso for Cameron in the morning. Now I'm going to grab some ice cubes. I'm going to do a wet shake. We normally do shakes around here. I'm grab one ice cube. Oh, big ol' ice cube. Oh, this should be in the other side so I can put the... Ah, we'll just drop an ice cube in there. It's fine. There we go. That's that's fine. Just a, just a wee bit haphazard today. It's gonna be all right. It's a chill, it's a chill stream. Those last couple streams of ours with the with the pride cocktails and the rainbow stuff. Oh man, that was that was really pushing it for me. It was a lot. It was so much fun. It was so much fun. And to everybody who participated in those, thank you. Those are probably some of the funnest streams that I've had in a long in a while. So that was freaking awesome. Um, but we're taking things a little bit slowly this time. I actually had other plans for what the stream was going to be. But when you're trying to organize with other people, things can get a little. Your schedules can get a little wacky. So that'll be pushed off to another time. Very special things coming to the bar with the next. It's fun stuff. So now I'm going to tap this off. Now that I got ice in the inside, we'll do the proper shake. It's going to get a little noisy just again because I'm shaking things with ice in it. There's a lot of there's solids in here this time. All right, that's nice and solid. I'm going to unplug. I'm going to turn off our espresso machine. 
I'm gonna let this thing depressurize itself far away from me. I'm gonna put it on the table over there so it's not blocking us anywhere. And Rai's got a very interesting, a probably very factual rendition of the history of Copper Tone. We'll get to that in just a hot second. Let me take this espresso machine. It's kind of warm. You can actually hold it from the back. It's not that bad. I'll put this over on our table over here. Hopefully not gonna do anything. It might actually passively be making espresso while the rest of the stream happens. That's pretty good. Like the sound of that. We actually just cleaned off our table the other well, we actually, we had our table cleaned up. We were playing this game, it was very, very fun. Yeah, I'm just making sure that I don't <laughs> mess up any of Anna's games on the table. Don't very big game. thing in here. Oh. Look at that. <gasps> Snap, photo, oh, it's gone. You didn't want me the photo, right? Oh my God. The original Copper Tone, lo Copper Tone, Logo was the profile of an aboriginal chief. In 1953, Tally Embry Advertising in Florida was hired, and their ad men create the concept of the little girl and the pup. An artist named Joyce ba Ballantyne Brand redrew the little girl in 1959 when the original artwork just was destroyed in a fire. She was then working for Grand, Adver Grand Advertising in New York. I wanted a clean plate for reasons. For reasons? Oh my. It's getting spicy out there. It's funny, I, I, I sometimes just say things as spicy in general, but because your name is Rye Cerrone, I think of Rye Whiskey and Rye Spice, it just works so well. I dig it. Karen, do you know where I put my wallet? Where your wallet is? Well, it's very clearly, its contents are emptied it in my wallet. No, I have not seen your wallet anywhere, unfortunately. I apologize. Oh, we were out of the store earlier. Did you take this the wallet to the store with us? Yeah. Hmm. I didn't take my phone, I took my wallet. The case of the missing wallet will eventually cl conclude, I'm sure. Oh, she found it, it's all good. So what we also need to do is we need to grab ourselves a glass for this. So allow me to, we'll switch the cocktail lingo over, get things ready over here in just a moment. And um, I'm gonna try to, so I've been trying, I've been trying some different things. So full disclosure over here, I re I'm almost starting to learn that I, I really like making content. It's actually very fun. And uh, I have, we have a cocktail blog that I that we post to I post to I always make the stuff over there um, after the fact all these uh, everything that you see here on stream is gonna get categorized uh, a, into a little recipe book that I have and I'll write my own little thoughts on it, a little cocktail blog so as such I realized that like like the words on a discord server are not necessarily that accessible and in the goal to have everybody be able to get the things that they want I wanted to do things a little more accessible so what I've decided to do is on YouTube TikTok, and Instagram I'm voicing over all of the blogs that I wind up doing just just to put some sound to it not necessarily that you, you know some people I, I feel I feel like there was a little missing thing of like people having it read out to them instead it, that they can't read it's not very accessible or they just can't find the discord anywhere so out of a out of attempt to make some more content uh, but also to be able to make things a little more accessible the content stuff is the main priority there I'm not gonna beat around the bush or anything I'm voicing it over right now if you find the different platforms and stuff and you if that's your thing then feel free to go over and drop those follows there they're coming out right now from the stuff that we did last week um, but if that's not your thing then cool you just sit right there and we'll get back to the cocktail I'm gonna get myself a martini glass and we're gonna do a little bit of preparation for it. Looking forward to it. Well, those two things are not usually the first things that people go to in regard to name rice -aroni. Well, I also think of rice and pepper, or, you know, rice -aroni, like, you know, the, <laughs> I got that too, don't worry. I understand that. Uh, Cameron's cocktails, Cameron's cocktails, tales of the cock, or, <laughs> Yeah, clip that. That's good. Um, let me pull this up a little bit. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to add a bit of, uh, we're going to add some chocolate syrup into our glass to basically just kind of like do this thing up a little bit. By the way, I want to apologize. It's like the third week in a row that we just had this really weird fly problem, which to be fair, it's not too much a problem. We haven't had people around here except for myself and I'll, um, I'll get high on my own supply, I suppose. Get flied on my own supply. Um, which is unfortunate, but I just got a little bug zapper that we're going to get in here. It's been very fly. I put up like Dawn Dis Detergent and, and apple cider vinegar and stuff. It just ain't working this time around. Usually it does. It's warm over here, so that's why it's happening. So essentially what we're going to do is I'm just going to put some maple syrup, uh, maple syrup, chocolate syrup, all around the inside of the glass. And looking kind of dirty, because it is kind of dirty. I'm just going to put this behind Pikachu. 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 Going to have a fun time over there. Next what we'll do is we'll... Um, Oh, what did I say? We're gonna fine. It says fine mesh strain. I really don't think we need a fine mesh strainer, but I will utilize the fine mesh strain that I got. We'll pour it over top, and then we'll garnish that with a bit more shaved chocolate and some shaved hazelnut. You can also actually do. It says crushed hazelnuts. I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna take one of my hazelnuts and I'm gonna crush it over top. Let's see what kind of foam we get on this. Oh yeah, the espresso martini. 
love espresso martinis. Oh my god, I love espresso martinis so much. I was seeing a post the other day, and I think it had something to do with people being like, yo, if you order like an espresso martini at the bar, like blah 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 opinions. And I was like, dude, I love espresso martinis. Don't hit me like that. Let's get some of our chocolate. I've got some of the, uh, I got this 60% Ghirardelli <gasps> Aqualit over here. I'm hiccuping a bunch for some reason. I don't know why. So I'll shave a little bit of that over top. No, crush a hazelnut. Why not? We got, I got some hazelnuts. I'm trying to get this chocolate out of here. It's just not. This is what I was doing to a glass last week and then I broke it. Oh, you know what? When you know what you want, you go straight to the source. There we go. There's our chocolate on the inside. I'm gonna rip it apart just a little bit more. And then we're gonna, we're gonna do a little shavy shave. Shaver, here we go. Okay, let's do some of that. So essentially, it's pretty easy. We're shaving chocolate. I don't think it, it bears no, bears no need for instruction. A little bit of, a little bit of shaved. A little bit of shaved now cocktail. Love that. Tales of the cock has been clipped by Rice Cerrone. My goodness gracious. Who knew that my words had so much power? Tell a person to do something and they'll do it. Now everybody, love yourself. Look in the mirror, deep in your eyes and validate, validate yourself. Just, 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 just look in the mirror and be like, you're all right today. You're all right. Maybe you're lying to yourself a little bit, but a little bit of positivity might go a long way today. And that's the powerful, those are the powerful words that I leave with you all today. I say, whacking the microphone, I'm trying to put this chocolate back in your Pikachu. Let me grab a hazelnut. Oh, it's nutmeg. I don't have hazelnuts. I have nutmeg. Ah, uh, oh. I'm not going to crush a nutmeg. That just feels weird. <laughs> not the kind of nut that we're trying to, trying to crush over here. Uh, fortunately and unfortunately, so we're just gonna go. We're just gonna go with that. We got a little bit of our. Oh, you can't even see the top of it. What am I doing? You can't even see it. There's the cocktail, and it's got a nice color to it. I like that. Let me put this guy away. I will probably be shaving more chocolate this evening, so I'll just put that off to the side. We'll put this off to the side. Everything is hunky dory. This is our espresso, our Ferrero Rocher espresso martini. And evidently, when I put my arm there, I blocked the light. Here's the light. There's the light, it's great. What story does this cocktail tell? The story that this cocktail tells is a story of a man who apparently pushes himself a little too hard. He works at home most of the days, sometimes, and sometimes he, there's a lot of pressure on him sometimes. He's working through it, he's young, he's uh, he's passionate, he's passionate, and um, he makes his cocktails on Wednesday nights. That's me, I'm Cameron. This is an espresso martini for Rare Rocher. It's got nut in it, specifically um, pecan nut in this case, unless it's, you know, the actual Rare Rocher. If I had one of those candies, I would put it up on top. And as I was reading through the comments of this Reddit post that I got this recipe from, other people were saying, God damn, if we don't put a Rare Rocher up on top, and the dude was like, yo, <laughs> I don't have a Rare Rocher, I can't do it. Um, I don't have a Rare Rocher either, but, but this is it. It smells so prominently of, I think, just like the creamier aspects of it. The, the, the crema up on top is a very nice, like, chocolatey smell to it. It's almost kind of chocolate milky. Um, I have chocolate shavings up on top. That feels actually quite appropriate there. It's pecan, not pecan. No, silly rye. You don't pee in pecan. You pee in a pecan. You don't pee in pecans. At least that's the way it was taught to me. I don't know. You do you. If you want to drink pecans, that's up to you. I, for one, choose to indulge in pecans. <laughs> That's a little syrupy. God damn, it's so good. God, I love espresso martinis. It's so good. Oh my God. That, wonderful. This is like the perfect, like, cafe mocha with significantly less milk in it. I don't really like a lot of milk in my cocktails, but to be, or the milk in my lattes. However, that is the nature of the latte. This has, I think, just enough like milky sort of dilution because we did add, it was, we had the Godiva chocolate liqueur in there. The Godiva chocolate liqueur is a cream liqueur, so that's enough cream for me in this particular coffee libation. There is such a strong chocolate note because I literally just took an entire sip of um, Hershey syrup in there. It's got a nice bitterness to it. I can taste the coffee. I can taste the chocolate. It's just, it's great. And there is a subtle sweetness there. Like, this is very clearly not just coffee. It is sweetened mocha coffee. It is chocolate, but it is also nondescript legume or nut flavor. I would say that like I could potentially specifically pick out the pecan in there, but I really can't to be honest. It just kind of tastes like sweet syrup, but it's not quite a simple syrup. It's not quite like 
like crystallized sugar, powdered sugar, it's in a different direction. A little bit more nutty, if you will, uh, but not quite the amaretto type of nutty, but it's in a different direction. It's, I freaking love espresso martinis. Like, this is just me kind of treating myself, so. Gosh, I love that so much. It's so good. Espresso martinis are so good for brunch. They are. I also like to comment. I made a note about that bitterness. I like to drink my coffee black. I like the bitterness of coffee. I'm a big fan of it. That's why I love like really dark Coke, uh, uh, really dark chocolate. So this has a very, very prominent bitter chocolate note to it. It is just absolutely delightful. And I love it. Oh, no. oh, switch out the Hershey syrup for some hot fudge, and you have a fudge packer. A fudge packer. Interesting. The Hershey syrup for hot fudge. That's a good idea. I don't have any hot fudge. I could run downstairs and just heat up the Ghirardelli in the microwave, but uh, now we good. It's fine. I'm just going to stick with this for a little bit. This is delightful. This is by no means any better or worse than like your normal espresso martini. It's just a different type of espresso martini. It's sweeter, reminds me more of the kind of stuff that you would get at like Starbucks and stuff. It's great, I love it. I would, in my own personal travels, consider this to be the premium espresso coffee libation because when I go out in the world, anytime I get coffee from like an establishment, if it's got like syrups and stuff in it, or it's got like, um, I don't know, milk, if it's a latte, cafe au lait, or anything like that, to me, it is a premium coffee beverage, always. That's because it takes the coffee and it makes it premium by adding other shit to it, other gunk and whatnot. Um, this is a premium coffee libation, a premium espresso libation for me. And I love it. And there are so many different ways to use espresso martinis, and there's a piece of me that feels a little cheap for even taking the last half hour to make an espresso martini, but I'm a little greedy and it tastes really good. So I'm keeping with that. I'm gonna grab myself a coaster, put it over here by me, the bartender, and um, progressively get more jacked up as we uh, continue this stream this evening because it's caffeine. I literally just made the espresso. You watched me do it. The beans themselves were not like, um, anti-caffeinated, what's the word? Decaffeinated, decaf. They were not decaf beans. They are not. Straight from Guatemala. Don't know if they do that over there. Maybe they do. Y'all got awesome stuff. Very tasty. Rice says, coffee plus other shit. Premium, premium. I can't read that for some reason. My, uh, my thing doesn't say. Premium hell. Premium hell yeah. Premium hell yeah. I don't know why, but I couldn't see the, uh, the, the thing up here. I couldn't see the last L. And I was like, help? Premium help? Do they need help over there? <laughs> what's going on? I don't even know. It was great. If Ryan needs help, somebody go help them. I, 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 I can't. Can't. I just can't over here. That's good stuff. Hmm. All right, we have other cocktails to cover this evening. What are we talking about? We're talking about chocolate and stuff. Chocolate, as you've just seen here, can be combined with espresso. I love a nice cafe mocha. I love chocolate and coffee. So that's why we started with chocolate and coffee. I'll remind everybody that if you're popping in now, there is some chocolate washed bourbon that is sitting in my freezer right now. We're gonna strain that out at the end and make a little chocolate Manhattan with that. The way that I imagine a chocolate Manhattan to be, not just like adding some mole bitters in there, but actually adding the chocolate to the co cocktail. I'm not just throwing creme de caco in there either. I've never tried a Manhattan this way. Um, we're gonna try it. Uh, that'll be at the very end. That'll be the last thing that we wind up doing. But in the meantime, we're gonna move on to something completely different. When I think of chocolate, in cocktails, the thing that we explored here is kind of chocolate as a garnish, kind of chocolate as a liqueur, and also a little bit of that chocolate syrup on the inside, which kind of like doubles as garnish and also kind of doubles as like um as like an ingredient in there. Uh, this one's got a very nice, very nice color scheme to it. I remember I forgot to take my little Insta photo for it, so let me do that real quick. It's a fine, it's a fine, it's a fine espresso martini. My thumb is in the photo. Do a little bit like this. I actually had an idea recently where um, it, it'd be kind of cool. So like a lot of like, a lot of cocktail creators out there spend a lot of time like taking pictures of the drinks and stuff, and that's something that I really don't have a lot of experience on. But I had a spare table over here, and I thought it might be cool to at some point in the future, like if we really get into the whole like cocktail creation side of things, and this is kind of like the studio with which we dress things up, see how they taste, play around with them. Then I could set up the cocktail angle as a means to kind of have this little like kind of play box in the corner where we can completely like dress up all of the stuff and whatnot. Um, but good stuff and whatnot. Rai says, message redacted due to possible racism, but was funny as F. Interesting, very interesting. I don't know if you typed it like that or if that was like Automod doing stuff or whatnot. Who knows? In any case, 
we move on to whatever else happens this evening. Uh, let's see. Well, let me look at what else we have this evening. The chocolate wash bourbon will happen at the end. Um, oh, you know, one of the things that I think of, um, the other things that I think of when I think of, like, chocolate, where, where else would you see chocolate and stuff, right? You can see it in a spirit. You can see it as a garnish. You can see it as an ingredient and stuff. You can also just, like, chocolify anything. On the note of chocolate washed bourbon, you can also just, like, infuse anything with chocolate. You can just take a little bit of, like, cocoa powder, throw it into something, and voila, you've made it cocoified. If you've ever had, like, cocoa puffs, or like cocoa pebbles or any of x number of like chocolate e ish flavored cereals out there you can infuse your milk with chocolate and then the best part about that was after you were done with the cereal portion of the evening or the morning you could drink the rest of the milk and it's delicious so this next cocktail is basically that it's um it's essentially a uh, chocolate milk um but you basically just added vodka to it that's pretty much all it is. It's called the Dwarven Delight, is our next cocktail of the evening. And it's actually from a board game that Anna and I bought called Heroes of Arcadia. And I had this special vanity glass for it. It's very cool. Let me write this up on the board and we'll, we'll move on. Bri says, ooh, to a chocolate mint julep. That's an idea, ooh, that's an idea. So mint juleps utilize, um, they utilize bourbon, I believe, if I'm correct, right? I did buy some, I did buy some mint. That could be fun. Depending on how much time we have after the, uh, the chocolate Manhattan, I like that idea. That is a very good idea. I like that very much. Okie dokie. What was this called again? Dwarven Delights. All the way through the night. With a little shot of vodka. In my chocolate milk. Dwarven Delights. That's, that's all I've got. Dwarven Delight. Delight. It's from a game called Heroes of Barcadia. The concept of the Heroes of Barcadia is it is a kind of dungeon crawling type board game where your health points are determined by how much drink you have left in your glass. As I'll show you all over here in a hot second, this glass is actually annotated with health points and stuff. The idea is as you fill this thing all the way up to the top, you have more health, and when you take damage, you drink it until you get to the bottom, and then you die, and then you refill up your cup, and you've been revitalized. It's a, it's, it's pretty fun. It's a, probably the best drinking game that I can possibly have in my apartment. I like it. Shot game, I'm not very good at Pong, but I am good at dungeon crawlers, so it's very, very nice. This actually, all the recipes from this game, uh, all, all all come in this little box. I had a, oh, here we are. Comes in this little book called The Liquor Nomicon. And on one of these pages over here, we have Dwarven Delight. As I'll flip to it. Ooh, excuse me. It's apparently toward the back. There we go. Dwarven De Delight, starring our character Maltilda, the bar, the bar, get it? Barbarian. That's pretty good. Essentially what we do is the measuring system for this is we measure up to the individual HP points. So, and, and I do have an outline of exactly how many ounces and whatnot that this is. Uh, the folks across the pond are going to have to forgive me on this one. There are some very specific ounce measurements here and I'm not quite prepared to do all the milliliter stuff. Uh, but I will try to uh, post them afterwards when I put this on the blog later with all the proper uh, and associated conversions and whatnot. Rice is oh yes it does. So, Rye was a, to the bourbon comment to the uh, the the mint julep. We actually had a mint julep before. That can be that one could be really fun. So what we'll do is I'll kind of put our cocktail angle a little closer, and we're going to build this quite literally like this. Our pal Maltilda, the stout-hearted, is going to allow is going to help us uh, create this cocktail that we see before you. So when you make this cocktail, the instructions in the book call for you to add in terms of health points, and the specified number of health points, like in terms of milliliter quantity, changes as it goes to the top of the glass. Obviously, five, 10 HP down here is less than 10 HP up here because the glass gets bigger up at the top but alas the heroes of Arcadia have you covered so what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill this glass halfway with ice cubes I'm going to employ the United States of America method we made a plenty of states from last week and I, uh, I redid because I refill the ice that we have on these streams so we're gonna fill this halfway up with I'm just gonna start all the way from the west and move forward so we got California in there going first got a little bit of Oregon got some Washington gonna throw in Idaho, just just really making our way down there. Put in Nevada. I'm gonna, I think that's Utah. This is probably Arizona or New Mexico, and whichever one I was correct about, the one that I was wrong about goes in next. And I'll throw a, uh, I'll throw Montana in there too. We'll leave Colorado and Wisconsin to uh, chill out and feel good that they weren't a part of this particular murder round. 
Y'all are safe out there, out there over in the west, or in the not so super west, like the central west, I suppose, if we had to be specific about it. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add five hit points of vodka. Uh, I have a little bit of this, uh, this Tito's left. I'm gonna try to, try to get to the end of it. Five HP at this level of the glass is gonna be about 0.8 ounces of vodka. We'll pop that down there. You might not be able to see, it's a very, very small layer here. It's kind of nice that we get to like kind of layer it over the ice cubes and stuff. There we go. There's 5 HP of that. Maybe a little bit more. Maybe that's more like 0.9 ounces, which is going to be, let's see, if one ounce is 30 milliliters, then I'm just going to ballpark that this is like 27, 27 milliliters. I'm, I'm trying to ballpark the folks across the pond, my love dearly. Next, we're going to add 10 HP of chocolate liqueur. The chocolate liqueur that I have, obviously, the choice is going to be this chocolate liqueur over here. That's the chocolate liqueur I'm a big fan of right now. Also, this bottle has been sitting in here probably a lot longer than it should have, um, and I should probably go to get a refill on that. But 10 HP at this point is gonna be 1.8 ounces, or I'm gonna guess like, maybe like 50 ounces, or 50, 50 milliliters, maybe like 53 milliliters of uh, chocolate liqueur. I was at the five mark, so I'm gonna pour up to the 15 HP mark. There we go. Um, I definitely went too high on that, but that's fine. That's all right. Technically, you can mix the drink however you want to. I apparently like mine a little more boozy on the boozy side. Next, we're gonna add milk. Whatever milk you have is the milk that you can use. I have almond milk this time. Just went to the store and bought it the other day. It's just kind of how it is in this house. That's gonna be 40 HP or about 9.4 ounces. I'm not even gonna bother trying to uh, convert that one over there, so. But I do have to, I do get to open up this fresh thing of almond milk, so lucky me. There we go. So I need 40 HP, so 5 plus 10 plus 40 is going to be 55. So we're going to bring this up to the 55 mark, which is almost full. Almost full. Build this right in the glass. And then that last 5 HP is going to get chocolate syrup. Woohoo to that almond milk. I like silk milk. Anna likes silk milk. She's the one who introduced me to silk milk long ago because she's not a big berry person. Not a big milk person in general. I understand that. I like my coffee without the milk, so that's how I get there. And then we need to top the rest off with chocolate syrup, so I'm gonna quite literally just dazzle this thing in chocolate syrup. There's, there's nothing else. That fi last five HP is gonna be about 1.3 ounces. Just like go for it. Just freaking smother this thing. There we go. That's good. It's got a nice layer at the bottom. And now all we need to do is uh, is um, stir things up, if you want to stir it up. Unless you're the kind of person who likes to drink it all the way to the bottom and get like a really fine reward all the way down at the bottom. Like, if that's you, do. Do you. I dig it. Me, for one, I like to mix my chalky milk, especially my vodka chalky milk. So I'm going to go with that. I'm just going to take a little picture of how this looks right now with a little Maltilda on the side. I love it. Oh my god! And now I'll get a nice get a nice stir in there. Incorporate everything together as best as we possibly can. It's very chocolatey. Love almond milk, says Rice Cerrone. I sometimes make my own. Ooh, I've never actually made my own job almond milk before. Um, but I know how to, at least generally speaking. You take the almonds, you uh, wash them off, put them with water, grind them in a food processor, and milk nut bag it out. Nut milk bag. You can nut milk bag. You use cheesecloth, I guess. I'd say what a drastic color change, but it really wasn't that drastic, nor was it very surprising either. We added brown stuff to white stuff and made the white stuff a little more brown. I'm not an expert in color theory, as was, or, uh, as was covered last week. However, I do at least know how to make chalky milk. Ooh, this has got a lot more... There's still so much more chocolate left on that spoon. I'm not going to do my bartending mixing action. I'm just going to... This is the way I did it when I was a kid. Getting that nice vortex. Alright. Mmm. Mm. Love chalky milk. Love that. So much. And that's it. That's really it. Now, what's cool about this game too is you're not necessarily expected to utilize the glasses that they provide here. And so, if we bought the Kickstarter edition, and it has these straws that are colored for each character, and you can put this in any glass you want to, and it also gives you HP bars that way. So uh, I'm gonna pop this in here. It doesn't exactly match up. Although it can, actually it does match up in these, in the vanity glasses. Actually kind of cool. Very, very nice. Very cool indeed. And uh, that's it. That is our, <laughs> it's our dwarven delights. And it looks like it's delicious. It looks like chalky milk, so 
that's <laughs> if it looks like chalky milk and it smells like chalky milk because it most certainly smells like chalky milk and that's the way to do it now if you were the dwarf maltilda charging into battle uh, the, the flavor text that they have on the little page of hers is small in stature, not in flavor, Maltilda. The recipe itself was by an individual named Zach Trolliar uh, because it's really cool. In, all throughout the Liquornomicon, all the recipes in here, if they came from somebody else, they actually credit who made the recipe. I think that's really cool. That is really nice flavor on the part of the creators of Heroes of Arcadia, which is Rollercrit. Rollercrit is the people, the folks who make the company or make the game. That's the company. Is a real quick. They they also do uh, they also do dice and stuff. And I was like chalky milk. It's all I'm getting from that. It just tastes like chocolate milk. That is a very very light chocolate milk. This is the chocolate milk that when I was a child I probably would have been disappointed in producing because I was the kind of kid who. Unless, like, I could actually see the globules of Hershey's syrup, like, kind of floating, but not being, a, like, floating up on top, but not being able to mix with everything else, I was disappointed. Because I was like, it's not chocolatey enough. I basically, as a child, wanted to chug the entire bottle of Hershey's syrup, but apparently I had enough of this idea of who an adult is supposed to be, that I just never did it, and I held myself back. Well, I'm an adult now, and uh, I'm finally living my childhood dreams, except there's significantly more alcohol in it. Significantly more, more not necessarily because of the amount, but because when I I was um, under the age of 20 for the most part there was zero alcohol and anything greater than zero is infinitely more than where we started so I had my first drink at the age of 13 thanks mom and dad and I liked it it was very good it's very very light on flavor this to me I can't taste any of the alcohol in this and to be fair all we did was add uh, 5 HP about an ounce of vodka and about two ounces or so, about 59 milliliters of chocolate liqueur. And the chocolate liqueur really isn't that high in proof. What is this guy? I think it's in like 20 something, late 20s. Oh, it's 15. There's like nothing in this. For the most part, I said. It's like a fortified one, but not fortified enough. And I mean, really, if this was your, if you, this was your game, and you're playing it with your friends back at home, you can garnish this if you want to. You might get to the bottom of the glass faster than you, uh, faster than you can actually, like, appreciate everything um but you know what this is the way to do it this is how like and like they just give you the recipes in the liquor nomicon if you want to follow the recipe you don't have to you can put your own drinks in there one of the cool parts is when we were playing it we've played it i think two or three times now i played it once where i just made myself a cocktail i think it was a boozy cocktail and i got through it way too fast don't put don't fill up your thing i say don't do it but you do whatever you want to but don't fill up your cup with just straight up negroni that's that's a lot of alcohol in there and you will be very sorry by the end of that you can use beer and stuff you can also just use water if you're the kind of person who doesn't really want to deal with other stuff you can use juice use water and stuff and it's cool because the game itself the tiles and whatnot are all waterproof so if you happen to spill get a little too aggressive with your roguelike fighting and stuff in the actual dungeon itself it's okay it's all waterproof so long as your table is waterproof mine is not waterproof it's made of cork and stuff we get like campari in that it's it looks like blood and it doesn't come out very easily um and that's why we have stains on our table but alas one day we'll do a game stream like a board game stream again and we'll go back to the table over there it's alcoholic chalky milk that's all it is i like my espresso martini better because it tastes like coffee and i can feel my eyes widening a little bit it's good stuff let's grab a coaster for this guy Pop him over here for this gal, for this gal over here, Maltilda, Maltilda, the keeper of the Dwarven Delights, which is basically just alcoholic chalky milk. I love that. So I guess the other angle of chocolate, chocolate, chocolate cocktails and stuff, you can really make anything a cocktail, I suppose. I don't really know what the line is between cocktail or max mixed drink or just spiked beverage like you know for a while i would think that like twisted tea and stuff is not really a cocktail unless i guess you made it yourself you had like vodka or something to tea it's a cocktail add a little more sweetener to it simple syrup i guess you can call it a cocktail i got no problem with calling it that i guess mixed drink might be more accurate but i'm not the person who writes the lexicons i'm not the pre person who advises for the encyclopedia boards uh listen you put alcohol in something that may or may not already be alcohol consider that a cocktail there's some really really awesome simple ingredient simple two ingredient cocktails out there that are great Gin and tonic, great. Uh, I think black and tan, black velvet, great stuff out there. And there's like a multitude of others. It's great. Um, so we'll move on. Not to a, a simple cocktail. I don't really want to. Actually, actually, you know what? That is a perfect seg to segue. Because there actually is a two-ingredient cocktail that I have prepared for this evening. And it's in a different direction of things entirely. Oh, you know what? We're going to go with that. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do that. 
Here's a simple two-ingredient cocktail that I somehow perfectly segued into totally by accident. That's the next one that we have. It is called Coconut Mint Chip. Because when I think of chocolate, I also think of chocolate ice cream. When I think of ice cream in general, I think of mint chocolate chip, which is one of my favorite flavors out there. And it's actually the name of the shirt that I'm wearing. I like plaid shirts and stuff, and so sometimes I name my shirts. This shirt is called Mint Chocolate Stripe because it has a mint color on it. It looks like it has chocolate stripes. They're actually black stripes, but let's ignore that for a moment. It's like dark chocolate and uh, stripes because it's kind of plaid-ish. Um, but this next one is not, unfortunately this drink is not plaid. I've tried to figure out maybe the best way to make a drink look plaid. I can't figure it out. I haven't been able to come up with something yet. Coconut, coconut mint chip. That's what it's called. Coconut mint chip. And essentially, literally, it's literally exactly how it sounds. So I have already described that this is a simple two ingredient cocktail. So you may be thinking already, the gears might be turning, what could possibly go into coconut mint chip? I would argue, and your answer may differ, that if we were to break this down into two components, either coconut mint and chip, or coconut and mint chip. Coconut and mint chip seems like the way that I'm going because it does utilize creme de coco and some mint chocolate, uh, mint chocolate moonshine, which we'll get to in a second. But, I, but consider for a moment, indulge me. What would a coconut mint, sorry, coconut mint and chip cocktail be like? Coconut mint to me sounds like it's own distinct flavor, unless like somehow you like crossbred like a coconut and like a mint plant and stuff, and you made it like kind of that nutty almondness, but also like that menthol y kind of airiness. I'm sure there's a fruit or something out there that matches that description perfectly. I don't know if it's called a coconut mint, but um, if such things exist, I hope that my path crosses with it one day. And then chip, I don't know, wood chips, I guess. If the, co if the coconut mint is a crossbreed of like the base of the coconut, so like the inside becomes like green or something, and you still have the coconut husk and stuff, you can like grind it up into a paste, I suppose. Maybe even fine, finerize it enough that it actually works a little better. More than awesome popping in here. Wow, almost a whole year, 10 months, my dude. Very, very fun. Welcome back, Brad. I miss you, my bud. Good stuff happening. Um, we're on a mint chocolate chip cocktail here, and I'm thinking about whatever we could be having with if coconut mint were a thing. And I really want to believe that you crack open it. Like, you know when you open up like a, a mature lime? I think mature limes are actually yellow and you cut it open, it's green on the inside. What if it was a mature coconut and you open it up and it's also green on the inside, but not in the moldy way? In the more splendiferous way, tasty way. I don't really know. Anyway, that's chocolate mint and chip. The wood chips are the coconut husk. This is coconut mint. Coconut mint chip, which is coconut and uh, mint chocolate chip. So let me grab those ingredients for us. It's an easy, simple cocktail. We'll get through this one real quick, I promise. What do I have for y'all? Cream of coconut, freshly bought from the store today. I realize I can't keep Coco Lopez in this house. I've learned. I tried to open up a can of Coco Lopez and keep it sealed, contained, refrigerated for a number of weeks, and it just keeps going bad. So I've opted for Simply Coco, real infused exotics, real gourmet cream of coconut, shake well, net weight 22 ounces, 623 grams, 16.9 he fluid ounces, real. That's that's what I have here, because um, you can squeeze it and squeeze it into the bottle. It just makes things easy. It'll make the cocktail easier, I promise you. This is supposed to be a simple drink, right? If you can get your hands on Tennessee Mountain Made Mint Chocolate Chip Cream, it's moonshine, old smoky. I actually got this recipe straight from their website, so it's great. So this is exactly what they want you to do with their old moonshine whiskey there. Brad says, I was going to say, is a coconut mint a fuzzy tiny plant, or is it a tree with big green nuts? In my mind, it is just as you would imagine a regular coconut tree but the inside of the coconut is what seems different, right? It's like, it's a big coconut tree, but the coconut itself has been mintified, as opposed to a tiny little frail mint plant with its dangly leaves and stuff, trying to support these massive coconuts of the ground, <laughs> which I imagine would kind of look like almost like spearmint blueberries. And I wonder if they would even get to the point where they would be edible. Like, did they become more like, like allspice berries where they're a little hard? and you have to like grind them up into a paste. I wonder if the coconut mint in this other universe that we're just kind of existing in right now, if it is one of those plants that lays low to the ground and is more akin to the mint than the coconut tree, then I wonder if you have to grind it up to get those coconutty and minty flavors. Alas, if there is a bioengineer out there in chat, let's talk. Let's, uh, let's talk something. This, I feel like we got a good idea here. So essentially, all we need to do for this coconut mint chip here is we're going to shake uh, half an ounce of cream of coconut, about 
22 milliliters or oh, 15 milliliters or so to three ounces of our all smoky mint chocolate chip cream whiskey. You could also use anything else mint chocolate chip. You could probably just take cream of coconut and combine it with milk chocolate or mint chocolate chip ice cream in a blender and this will probably taste more or less the same, less boozy, but an alternative option for our non-alcoholic friends out there. I'm sure it would taste amazing. I don't have any mint chocolate ice cream, unfortunately. I do have chocolate ice cream though. And that'll come later, one of our next few cocktails and such. So I had this cocktail for, I had this uh, shaker from earlier. I'm gonna do a little clean of it because this is this is a flavor profile that I don't think is far away from our espresso martini over there. So I'm just gonna do this a little, just do a little clean off over here. Um, trying to conserve things as best as possible. Until our, until our mighty benefactors, which is my bank account, will decide to get some more, uh, get some more strainers and shakers and whatnot in here. One day, one day the bar will be so big you won't even recognize it. With 35 different angles. There'll be 40 different bartenders with X's. Every single one will have their own bartender. There'll be the whole Xing ceremony too. Everybody who earns their X will be knighted by whoever came before you. I was the first bartender with an X and I shall knight every iteration that comes out afterwards. I salute to the future generations. We'll get there eventually. That's cool. That was a fun little thing we did there. I'm glad that we did that. I wonder if future generations will look back on this and be like, what? <laughs> what is he talking about? That's great. So we need, uh, we're gonna put this, we're gonna put this in a thing. We're gonna strain it over ice. Uh, this is supposed to go into a martini glass. I don't have any extra martini glass. Oh, yes I do actually. I take that back completely. Let me get some ice over here to fill up our shaker. Just as we normally do. When it's cocktail time with Cameron and you. It's fun stuff over here. Maybe we'll have a live band and stuff too. It'll be great. Just like, I don't know. What shows have live bands? Conan O'Brien. <laughs> Cocktails O'Brien. <laughs> Cocktails with Conan O'Brien. <laughs> I wonder, he probably drinks cocktails. I'm sure he does. I had to have two random bottles of Old Smoky stuff that we got in Gatlinburg that are chocolate related. Woo! I think these ones were gifts for me from, I think, um, well, where did these guys come from? These came from my, uh, my friends over in Harrisburg, I believe. I get my wires crossed sometimes, so if I forgot, no, 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 these definitely came from the Harrisburg friends. They most definitely did. Um, I got my ice in one side. We're gonna add some cream of coconut into one, and then um, the oh smoky in the other. Half an ounce of cream of coconut. That's really all you need. Usually, I'd put liquids into one side and solids to the other. Don't think I'm gonna do that this time. I think it'll be relatively easy. So, oh, I need to open this thing up, do I? Huh. There's a little fresh ASMR, I guess. Yeah, there we go. Oh, it is so. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's so solid in there. You like. It's like. <laughs> it's like gel. I put this on my face and start my modeling career. And also become British. Maybe one day. I have to shake this. I didn't actually shake this. You're supposed to shake this. So just like go wild on that. Oh, Buckeye and Mudslide were the two bottles. Those bottles were in the cabinet and I, that I never look in because I said, oh shit, we have a bottle of Empress Gin in here. Like, why would we go for that stuff if we've got Empress Gin? Dude, I've never actually had Empress Gin before, but I'm really curious to see like how it tastes because I've only ever made my own my own purple gin by infusing butterfly pea flower with any gin that I had laying around. So I'm actually very curious to see what the botanical profile is of Empress. I just like, it's one of those things that I just never got to, you know? One day, maybe, when I feel like shelling out the money for it. All right, half an ounce. Whoa, it makes funny sounds. That's funny for a first couple seconds. All right, that is a very chunky. <laughs> it's so chunky. Get out of here. That's not. <laughs> yeah, that didn't work out the way that I wanted it to. Oh, and I missed some of it. Oh my God. Get in there. Come on, get, 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 get. Get it, get it. This is disturbing as fuck. Check this out. <laughs> get out in there. It's like, <laughs> this is the nut from earlier. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is great. Oh my God, this is downright kind of disgusting. Also, I put it in the wrong side of the glass. I was supposed to put it in the other one. It's fine. It's chill. I'm gonna cheat a little bit. There we go, just a little more. I freaking love coconut, so that's just how I'm gonna leave it. There we go, that's... <laughs> oh, <laughs> that 
It's great. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to clean that out a little bit. Actually I'm gonna lick some of it. Oh god, I love coconut. God, I love that. That didn't even clean it out at all. I'm gonna put a little more water in there. Oh my god. That was that was great. Oh my god. I can't help it, but this is just suntan lotion. Someone mislabeled it. It really feels like suntan lotion, Larry. Seriously, I didn't expect it to come out so solid. Like, I literally bought this at the store. It has no instructions for like pre. You know, fuck it. I'm not using. That. I'm not using that measure anymore. We're getting. A <laughs> I'm not going in for the sloppy seconds of that jigger. I'm gonna use a different one for the three ounces of the old smoky that we're gonna add. Oh, y'all can't see anything. There we go. Try to fix that a little bit. I think we have a bottle of that Coco Lopo stuff. <laughs> she has a gloopy drink. I had Coco Lopez, but evidently I don't know how to keep it. And so it went bad. I actually, I had some leftover Coco Lopez that I was going to use for the stream, and I took a smell of it. I took a little taste of it. I was like, is this still good? And like, I don't exactly know how to describe how bad Coco Lopez tastes, but as soon as I took a, like, a, took a thing of that, I was like, no. That's not the way that the coconuts I eat smell. Or I guess technically the coconuts that I drink, because, you know, it's got that liquid quality to it. Anyway, here's our Old Smoky. Our Old Smoky, it's very green. I don't know if y'all can see the greenness. Or, uh, so let's, let's put this over the top. Everyone can see the color change as both. Very gloopy indeed. We'll pop you up at the top. Hello, bar. Hello, not so bar. This is the inside of the glass. Oh, you can't really see that. We'll make it better. We'll make it better. There we go. You can kind of see that. There you go. Hello. Hello, inside of the glass. Welcome to the inside of the glass. You are the cocktail now. There's the green stuff. And there we go. And now it's green. And now we're going to add... That was two ounces, about 60-something milliliters or whatever. And now we're going to add the other ounce for a grand total of about 88 milliliters of our mint chocolate whiskey from Old Smoky. Old Smokey's got some good stuff in here, yeah he do! I don't know what accent I'm doing now. I, I assure you, I'm from New Jersey. I don't have a special accent. We just talk about pork roll and Taylor hand sometimes. Anyways, I'll pop that back to this round over here. And um, we'll combine our liquids into our solids. And uh, there's also, there is definitely still cream of coconut at the top of this thing. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. But we got a bunch of ice in there, you know? It's gonna wind up doing all that scraping work that I would have done with if my tongue were long enough. It's gonna do it for me. I'm gonna clean off this guy over here because it's, it's cream in there, dude. Hmm. That is a very sh pleasant shot of minty water. I like that. Things Cameron say when they come out. Oh, God. Don't let him lie to him. Spend time with Cameron. He does have an accent. Don't let him lie to you. Oh, I must... Everybody's got an accent that they're not aware of. Just like everybody's house has a smell that they're not aware of. You get so... You get so, in, like, engaged in your surroundings that you just don't notice this stuff. I definitely have an accent. And I definitely know when I'm trying to fake an accent of some other distant country. I'm not very good at it. Although I certainly try my best on that. I'm gonna put my old smoky away. We don't need her anymore. Once we've used Old Smoky, we don't need her again until the recipe calls for it, in which case we're fine. We're gonna give this a shake and we're gonna put it into a martini glass. I'll show you, I'll show you the martini glass I got in mine. This stuff is really good. Brad says, somehow all those countries ended up being England, mate. <laughs> Every single one of them. There we go. Let me grab a martini glass over here. Billy Bob Joe 63 popping in here saying, yo, comma. I say, hey, exclamation point, question mark. We call those in tarabangs, I believe. Or maybe the linguists call them tarabangs. I don't know what I call them. I call them the... That's what I call them. I utilize my face for that. I got this cute little glass over here. I bought it from a place called Gatorland USA. I don't remember where it is. It's somewhere in America. Another place you find stuff like that, it's great. This little guy is supposed to be a frog? Or like a gator? I don't know what animal this is supposed to be because it's got like little web feet and it's got these big bulgy eyes. I freaking love this guy. It's great. Well, haven't all countries at some point been a part of England? Basically, in Tarabang, the sarc- <laughs> the sarcastic. <laughs> I've never heard that before, that's great. Oh my god, that's great. I have to strain this over ice, so evidently I need to add some more ice to my glass. And this thing is, whew, I cannot get in there. 
Let me add some more, uh, um, what do you call these things? They're not countries. They're like countries, but in America. Let's go, hmm, there we go. We got one of these goes. Billy Bob Joe popping in here with the follow. You have a seat at my bar any day, my friend. Saying, how's your day been? Comma, period, right parenthesis, left parenthesis, hashtags, asterisks, ampersand, at symbol, quotation, left quotation, semicolon, hashtag, equal sign, minus sign, percent sign, dollar sign, ampersand, uh, the yen symbol, left parenthesis, pound symbol, exclamation point. Billy Bob, I don't think that was a question, but I'm doing all right. Thanks for asking. I put a little bit of ice in there. There was definitely a question mark in there somewhere, but I feel like perhaps your other gra your other punctuation might have canceled it out. I don't know. Somebody call a linguist. I need help over here. <laughs> not for a variety of reasons, actually. I'm just gonna strain this the old-fashioned way. It's just, it's just easy. This is not like the old-fashioned, old-fashioned way, as if we were talking like cocktail old fashions. Although I suppose you could strain old fashions this way. I don't really know, dude. Y'all do you. Also, what's the point of putting, a, it says strain over ice. What's the point of straining over ice when I just have enough uh, ice in here already? I guess we're trying to, like we're trying to control the type of thing that we're doing here. That's going in the bucket, I'm not touching that again. And you know what we're gonna do after this? We are going to garnish this with a little bit of, I wanna call it fresh mint because it was freshly bought from the store. I can't seem to grow plants in here. Oh, bad news, Brad, Bermutha is dying. This is not very good around here. Oh, that's a very sad mint thing. Let's do this one instead. <laughs> uh, the left curly brace is less curly. Oh, left curly brace is not parentheses. Oh, is there a left curly brace in there? I might have misread that. I'm staying this live for a while, I can tell. Left. Well, I mean, certainly, <laughs> Billy Bob, if you're typing out punctuation like that, then you got to be a little more careful. You might have to take a little more time with your next, uh, with your next type, I guess. I got some mints. You can see that mint. Can you see that mint? We're gonna slap it. I'm gonna. I usually slap it on my hands, but I'm gonna slap it on the camera first. Now I'm gonna. There we go. Now there we go. Clap that thing, and we're gonna go for it. This is this is coconut mint chip, and she is beautiful. I'm gonna put this mint in my refrigerator. Unlike last time, I left it out in the open, and it was bad in days, and attracted a whole lot of flies. Bad things around here. Oh no! Brad says she had such promise two months ago. Yeah, evidently this place just doesn't get enough light in here. Oh, y'all really can't see the top of this. We were too busy staring at whatever this animal's face is. There we go. Hello, you. Hello, you. Beautiful. I love it. Larix just typed an exclamation point on top of it? A question mark? I've never seen this punctuation before. It took me far too long to find it. <laughs> Terrapang in the character map. I didn't realize that it actually had its own thing. Oh, that's so great. I wonder if that showed up on stream. I don't know how Streamlabs does with the whole like chat box thing, whatever. So I have to be careful with this glass. It's back heavy. Like when there is a drink in this, this thing does not want to stay up straight. It's actually quite wild. Um, so if I don't keep this thing like controlled, it's gonna want to fall backwards and spill everywhere. Um, that's just how it be around here. It's great. Cameron's, oh no, not me. <laughs> Brad says, I'm gonna slap the mint on the camera. Also me. For some reason, the cocktail cam view isn't working. <laughs> uh, maybe I, let me, hold on, let me like, let me, hold on, let me, I, I can take care of this. I can take care of this. Hold just, <sighs> wait, let me grab one of my, oh, that's not the good one. <sighs> here you go, y'all. It's gonna be all right. Be all right. You just need a little, just a little. There we go. I look perfect in there. I'm all doing great. It's the only way I can look at. I feel like the only way that I can like actually look people in the eyes on the stream is when I stare directly into the camera, but as close to the camera as possible. And luckily, there's at least two of them. It's great. <laughs> to the interrobang is the actual interrobang, says Rai, and it's used to be. It used to appear on typewriters. Are we making apple juice? We're making apple juice, right? Only 26 games to play. I've lost a lot of context there. Um, to answer your question, if your apple, ju if this is apple juice to you, Billy Bob, and it is green, I have questions, and I might be worried. But I kind of was already worried when you popped in with all that punctuation and stuff. But perhaps I should be the one that I should be worrying for. Take care of number one. Green apples. Oh. Pfft. Duh, Brad coming in here with absolute logic, duh. So this is our coconut mint chip. It has quite simply old smoky mint chocolate whiskey and cream of coconut in it. And I put some fresh mint leaves on it. Fresh. Um, the plants in here die. Every single one of them have died. It's so crazy. I killed a basil and a mint plant and parsley. Evidently those plants are unkillable, but I did it. Yours truly. It's a very simple drink. 
It smells very heavily of mint. It goes well in a martini glass. It actually pours out, uh, pours out very perfectly into a small martini glass. So, and this was a total of like three and a half ounces or about math 88 plus 15 is going to be like 98 plus the 5 103 103 milliliters yeah math you know what that tastes like it's not an apple it tastes like mint chocolate chip with the slightest the slightest hint of coconut specifically i thought that there was going to be a bit more coconut flavor i've never actually tried this particular coca um coco Lope. It's not Coco Lopez. What do you call this thing? Cream of coconut before. It was, what was the brand on this guy? Oh, I put it in the fridge. I'm too lazy. Rewind. You can go find it there. But I've never used this brand before. So it's not as potently coconut as Coco Lopez is, which I wish I could have used, but I can't seem to keep that thing very well. Sad face. Also, just really wasteful. If I use the Coco Lopez for a single drink and then toss it, like I would much rather just not do it unless I have a whole like slew of drinks prepared and whatnot. Um, I need more people to drink the stuff that I make, so. Open for guests and synergies, yo. Um, but this is a very light coconut. It's very forward on the mouth of mint chocolate chip. It tastes straight up like mint chocolate chip until you start to breathe a bit. That might make sense to some people, it might not make sense to others. This is very mint chocolate chip on the tongue. It tastes like mint chocolate chip around, but in the back of my mouth, the very back of my tongue, when I continue breathing and talking, as I seem to be doing now, I get coconut and a slight bit of mint there. It's very, it's very airy. It's got that nice menthol-y airiness to it. But for the most part, this is basically like ice cream that you drizzle a little bit of like, I guess like coconut, Coco Lopez on, or a couple of like coconut flakes and stuff. It's pleasant. It's very good. And it looks funky, so I like that. Brad says that I'll kill some bamboo. We know. We know we have. Billy Bob says that they killed cac that killed a cactus before, but no clue how that happened. I would wonder. I've overwatered cacti before, and that, actually, I did kill a cacti in my last apartment because I overwatered it. So that might be one way that we, you know, we might have done this to the world around us. Larrick says, Coppertone, Banana Boat, Hawaiian Tropic, if you are fancy. So many different things. It's, you know, whatever you want to put in this. You can put whatever you want in here, really. Cream of coconut, <laughs> whatever brand you want to. Yeah, just put a little bit of a, what's that one? Sun Bum. Sun Bum is my favorite. It kind of smells like banana. I'll take some of that. Brad also says, if I was there, I'd force you to make a verte shard. Collabs are great because you can bu you can bully me into doing whatever you want them to. I succumb to social pressure. As soon as part of people start saying, do that, do that, I lack self-control. Sometimes. I say that to get views. I lack self-control. Watch me drink alcohol. Click, subscribe, ring the bell. I don't know. Do whatever you want to. I'm not your dad, nor am I your mom. Not tonight, at least. Yeah, it's good. I like mint chocolate chip. Mint chocolate chip is probably my favorite ice cream flavor, so... One of my favorite ice cream flavors. I'm trying to think that that's changed a little bit. No, it's still mint chocolate chip. I like that. I like that very much. Brad says, birthday shawd is a hot cocoa and chartreuse drink. Is it really? Oh... I'm not bringing out the induction thing this evening. I'm just, I'm just not gonna do it. I feel, I was, I was thinking about it. I was like, it's a, hot, it's a chocolate stream. Do we do hot cocoa? Like, nah. I don't want to take up the induction cooker. There's so many other fun stuff to do other than hot cocoa. Besides, we already made chalky milk. If you want it hot, just wait for a little bit. Just ever, ever so patient. I'm gonna take this guy and put him over. Pikachu can have this one. There you go, buddy. Don't sip it all in one place. Everybody knows that electric type. Yeah, that thing is so top heavy. I'm gonna put something behind it so it doesn't like inadvertently fall over and make a mess of everything. Here's a little container. It's it's heavy enough to get the job done. There you go. Here you go, buddy. Don't precariously placing glasses on the bar. Yeah, that's what we do around here. Cookie dough. Hello. Ooh, cookie dough. And also, yes, cookie dough. You can make one just for you after the stream, after everything is over. Or I can do a small little video on it. Cookie dough's a great idea. Yeah, but like cookie dough is like. Cookie doesn't have to be chocolate. Cookie dough can just be dough and chocolate chips. Actually, come to think of it, I don't have any like cookie dough flavor stuff. That's an excellent flavor that I currently don't have stocked here. I'm sure that Old Smoky, if they can do a mint chocolate chip, definitely do like a cookie dough type thing. Or I'm sure there's some viral combo out there that makes anything that you put together. Like we've, we've combined Dr. Pepper, Coca-Cola, arsenic, and gasoline, and it tastes like cookie dough. And everyone's like, <sighs> 10 out of 10 would definitely cookie dough again because the internet is a wild place. Which, as I say that, we are on the internet. Hello, internet. I'm Cameron. I like to do things sometimes. Brad also says, I think the other old smoky we have is mango habanero. 
That's a great combo. I actually have some habanero tincture still left, o left over from a spicy stream we did a while ago, but I don't have anything mango flavored, so I could always just get mangoes from the store. It's an easy thing to do. Like they sell them at Whole Foods. It's great. Brad also says there's one more. We bought a bunch of six or seven ago. Got Aaron drunk and proposed to him. Oh, that's cute. I was not drunk when I proposed to Anna. I was drunk when I proposed to other people in my life, but none of them took me seriously, unfortunately. Larry's popping and saying, if I may, I've made the perfect cookie hot toddy. The secret is toasted barley tea. Oh, yeah. Writing that one down. Toasted barley tea. Toasted barley tea. Cookie dough hot toddy. I'm writing that down. I'm dangerous with these markers. If you tease me with something that sounds like it tastes good, I will write it down. And you can save me the effort by putting it in the Discord server. <laughs> that way I don't have to write anything down. It looks great. Now I want to make toasted barley tea infused gin. I've never tried before. Toasted barley tea, dark creme de caco, brown butter washed rum, and butter syrup. That sounds so delightful. Actually, I have the power of copy and paste, so I'm just going to open up Notepad. There we go. Nice, we got it. That was so much either, easier than writing with my hands. Anyway, we got more cocktails this evening, so let me move on to another one over here. Let me think of what we go next. We've done mint chocolate chip. We've done the Dwarven Delights, which is basically just alcoholic chalky milk. And we had this beautiful espresso martini that instead of using the hazelnut of Ferrero Cher, actually used Evangeline's pre Pika on the core, praline the core. It's freaking delicious. I love it. Uh, in any case, uh, we're going to move on to something a little bit different. What was, there was a combo the other day that I was doing a little bit of, I was doing a little bit of cocktail creation in my free time. I think there's a... Hmm. Hydration is key. There is a little project that I was working on for something, some upcoming collab. I don't know when it's coming because uh, scheduling things is a little wacky, but I hope that it will someday. I have an entire cocktail uh, menu that I was working on. It was great. Reverse lunges. Here we go. Reverse lunges. Here we go. As I continue talking about this, but I found this really awesome flavor combo that I had never thought of before. And it was white chocolate liqueur and tequila. I was like, I saw that. I saw that and I was like, I, I wonder how this is going to taste. And it is just delightful. Tequila, I guess it doesn't have to be any particular type of tequila. It can be a Blanco tequila. It can be a Reposado tequila. I think I use a Reposado tequila for this particular combo. We'll get into that in just a moment. But it is so freaking tasty. <clears throat> and I use that in one of my cocktail creations. Not going to share it right now. It's secret for now at least. Um, however, we are going to make a cocktail known as the Vanilla Rose and White Chocolate Cocktail coming from theflavorbender.com where we utilize some rose syrup, white chocolate liqueur, tequila, white chocolate melted. Um, I don't actually have white chocolate melted, um, so I'm not actually going to do that. Um, however, we could also add some heavy cream or in vodka in there. I realize I actually have this recipe here, but I don't think I have all the ingredients for this recipe. So instead, I'm going to do something a little bit different and I'm going to go back to this other recipe that I made and I'm just gonna reverse it because it used to be this recipe that was heavily modified but that I did something else with it so we're gonna do that instead so let me quickly go over to that I don't remember which one it's called oh oh no we're gonna do this anyway we're just gonna we're just gonna make it work this is what we'll do over here that terrible flip we've made with tequila and chartreuse and an egg and Jaeger and looks was actually pretty great that was the death flip I think I had so wanted to make that one for a while I can get the white chocolate and tequila. I can get white chocolate and tequila. It's very good stuff. Oh, it's it's so great. So let me let me grab the white chocolate. Let me get, grab the tequila we're gonna use. The white light Whoa, the white chocolate that we're gonna use is this white chocolate Godiva liqueur. It's great, it's wonderful, it's Godiva. And um when I tried it, I used the expensive Patron Reposado. And it tasted really good, so I'm gonna do it again. Cause it tastes really, really good. Um, what is this cocktail? This is called the vanilla rose and white chocolate cocktail. That's a lot to that's a lot to swallow. So I'm gonna I'm gonna write it up on the board. Let me get some hydration on my body. It's good. To, it's good to hydrate. It's good to hydrate. Good to work out a little bit. That's what we try to promote on these streams. If you're gonna do, that's the thing. You know, alcohol is a toxin. Alcohol is a vice to many many people. And the way to do things safely is to just pace yourself. And you know. Do other things in the meantime. Instead of just drinking alcohol, smoke doobies. No, lifts. I mean, maybe you don't want to lift weights while drunk. Actually, I am not a professional on this, so please don't take my advice on that. Um, I just drink things sometimes. This one was called Vanilla Rose and White Chocolate Cocktail. Vanilla Rose and 
white choco, choco, choco cocktail, cocktail. For a brief moment, every time that I write cocktail on the board, it is just cock, and I think that's hilarious. Brad says, that awful death flip, if you missed out there in chat, there in chat land, tastes like vanilla custard. It was very custardy. Like, straight up, like, flan met, like, other stuff in gray. It was wonderful. Very long and involved recipe posted in Discord. Ooh, I'm definitely checking that one out later. I definitely stayed way more hydrated on that stream than I normally do when drinking, so I'm a, I'm a great influence, evidently. Marvelous handwriting, holy cow. Praise the writer. I wonder who did that. Certainly not I. I'm shit at writing things. So this cocktail recipe that we had here came from flavor, theflavorbender.com. There's a lot that goes into it, and evidently this, this thing that I have here says it makes a single drink. However, it says that we're putting four ounces of melted white chocolate in this, which I don't think is going to work the way that this thing intends to. This goes in a little martini glass. I'm not going to put it in a martini glass. Well, uh, we're, we're going to play this. We're going to play this by ear. Um, we're just, just going to make that. We're just going to make that work over here. So essentially, what we need to do is you would put white chocolate liqueur and tequila into a cocktail shaker with ice cubes, stir for a few seconds, mix and chill, and strain into a martini glass or any other serving glass. The image that I have here very clearly shows a very red liquid on the bottom of the glass. So you would think, well, why would you be putting the white chocolate and stuff there first? White chocolate liqueur, which comes in at about evidently 15% alcohol volume, and this tequila, this tequila, not liqueur, comes in at 40%, about 80 proof there. It's high in proof. It's going to want to float to the top. Whatever other stuff you put in there, so long as it's basically just syrup and stuff, is going to float. To, it's going to sink to the bottom. I have trust issues with online recipes that I've never made for myself. So instead, I'm gonna put the red stuff in first at the bottom, and we're gonna layer these two on top of it so that there's not gonna be some like weird, like red streak down the side of the drink. It's gonna be weird looking, weird for me. It was not weird for anybody else. You just play the game how you're told to. And um, I, for one, was never very good at sports. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna play by my own rules over here. Um, but essentially what we're doing is we're taking syrup and we're putting it at the bottom of the glass and we're laying the white chocolate liqueur and tequila on top of it. The syrup of choice that we have here is going to be a rose syrup. Now, I don't specifically have rose syrup, but I've been on this kick because I picked up some rhubarb at my local farmer's market and made this really beautifully colored rhubarb and rose syrup. And it definitely has enough rose flavor to get the job done for this particular cocktail. So we're gonna use this rhubarb and rose syrup instead of just rose syrup. It's very floral, little tart, very much rosy, and uh, I think it's a strong it's a strong syrup. So instead of being like one to one ratio of sugar to liquid, we have a ratio of two parts by volume to one part of the liquid. So it's great. Matt Darlin says, "Whoa, that's sick, dude. Nah, you're sick, dude. Thanks for popping in, and I hope you feel better." More than awesome says, "Rhubarb is the best barb. I don't know any other barbs. Actually, I have an aunt Barbara. She's a pretty cool barb. She's nice, and I like my nice aunts and stuff." Okay, so what we're going to do for this one is we're going to pour the rose syrup into the glass. I realize now it says four ounces of melted white chocolate, heavy cream, and vodka. That's a lot of vodka. It says an entire half cup of vodka. I think that's instructions on how to, oh, it's how to make your own white chocolate liqueur. I did not catalog that correctly. We can make this cocktail. I was just way too overzealous, evidently. Yeah, I'm just going to put four full ounces and it's an entire cup of stuff into a martini glass and just watch it spill everywhere. That's, um, somebody's going to have to pay me extra for that one. Brad says, remember you and I had that awful John Ray schedule? Was ca cocktail? Dude, the, uh, the Negronatini? Dude, that's such a fun one. Uh, when I was testing out the, um, uh, let me get this thing ready. What am I doing? I need to shake. Eh, we'll, we'll do things. We'll do things over here. I don't have an extra martini glass. It's big enough for all this stuff. I'm going to put this in. I'm going to put this in. I'll put it in a coupe glass. I'm going to put this in a chilled coupe glass. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'll do. Meta has arrived. Welcome. There's a seat at the bar right here. There's no actual seats. I lied to you, so you're just going to have to stand or sit in your chair. Just do whatever you're doing. You'll be fine. I promise you that. That was a full recipe for two people for that John Ray cocktail, the Negronitini, which, by the way, is not a very good combination of Negroni or Martini. It was weird. Oh, no, there are seats. I mean, there's technically seats. There's seats all over the place, technically speaking. Check it out. I guess I said that I was lying, but I'm not actually lying. I guess I'm lying about the fact that I'm lying. Look, there's seats. That's the other side of the bar. That's the side of the bar people don't usually see because that's not really the front row, you know? In any case, let's get this cocktail going. I need a glass of some sort. I'm gonna grab myself a chill, uh, not a chill coupe glass. We're gonna do just a coupe glass. That's what I got over here. Still here, says Billy Bob. Doing a little like, what is that? A nice little like, 
jig there. Lanchenainchener. I like that dude's flair. I'm totally down with that. All right, pop on in here. What do we got? I'm going to put the cocktail angle up. We're going to get a little bit close to this coupe glass over here. You can see that beautiful, beautiful colored rhubarb and rose syrup. Not my recipe. I can't take credit for that. Go talk to Emily Hahn. This was her creation. Okay, we'll pop you over here. So essentially what we're going to do first, we're going to take this... Actually, I hate this angle. We're going to do it in a different direction. We're going to turn. Move these liqueurs out of the way. We're going to... I'm going to try to do this really awesome cinematography thing. And I'm not a cinematographist. I'm an engineer. So that kind of sucked. But it's chill. <laughs> we'll be fine. We're going to have this, hopefully, this really cool layering of our red pinkish syrup on the bottom and our white chocolate up on top. So let me set up this contrast here. Eh. I hope that looks okay. I can only barely see things. I'm not very good with the things that you look at. Your eyes? How can cocktails be real if our eyes aren't real, really? So we need three quarters of a shot of rose syrup. Oh, you're giving me the measurements and shots? Dude. Flavor bender, come on. Well, a shot to me is 1.5 ounces or about 44 milliliters. So if we do the math a little bit, three quarters of, uh, three, let's see, three halves, six fourths times three quarters, three quarters times the six fourths is going to be 18 over top of 16. So, uh, 18 over top of 16. I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to put quarter of an ounce in there. Sure, I'll do that. Let's, whoa, I had extra liquid back in this thing. Three quarters is half of your is half of your quarter of an ounce shot. No, but that's three quarters of that. It's three quarters of a shot, which means three quarters. Alexa, what is 0.75 times 1.5? 1 1.125, 1 1 that's an ounce and an eighth. <laughs> okay, an ounce and an eighth. I'll take that. So. We'll put a single ounce. There we go, single ounce. And what I'm gonna call an eighth. There we go, there's an eighth in there. That's what I'm gonna go with. Two plus two, that's five, Billy Bob, come on. Give me some harder problems over here. Now what we're gonna do is in a separate container, I'm gonna use my, my shaker over here, we're gonna combine a single shot, or about 1.5 ounces of white chocolate liqueur, to half a shot of tequila. I've got our white chocolate liqueur, it's our Godiva. I'm gonna put a little ice cube in here, a couple of small ice cubes actually. This, this shaker's a little particular sometimes. We'll use the small ones over here. This is when I just break out the whole recipe down to ratios. Do something like 1.78 to 0.9 to 0.7, then we just call it, it's one 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 one. You know, I do computer stuff for a living, so you basically just talk to me in binary, and for that, I thank you. I think. I don't know how computers flirt with each other. There's probably a pickup line there and a pun to be had, but I don't have any, unfortunately. Not this time, at least. One shot! That's 1.5 ounces! I'll flip my thing over, there's still a little bit of syrup left in there, and we'll go to the 1.5, aka 44 milliliter line, their white chocolate liqueur. Is it gonna be the rest of it? No, thank goodness, we still have more. All in there. Every best recipe is one to one to one. I love one to one to one recipes. One to one to one to one to one one. Close the freaking container, dude. Yeah, thank you, camera. You're welcome, camera. Stop yourself again. <laughs> Nobody ever does that. Nobody's ever done this in the history of bartending, talking to himself. We also need half a shot of tequila. That's gonna be 0 .7, 0 0.75 ounces or about 22 milliliters um, for the smart math folk out there. Um, I'm pretty sure I actually did 2 plus 2 incorrectly earlier. It's definitely not 5. It's definitely 3. So I apologize for that. Half an ounce. No, 3 quarters of an ounce of our tequila. You can really use any tequila here, I guess. I tried it rep with a Reposado first. That's this stuff back here. It's a little darker. Um, and I'm going to stick with that Reposado because I stand by that. I love that very much so. Very good. Billy Bob says, are you a motherboard? Cause I would, I would ram you all night long. Random access memory me. <laughs> That's, uh, that doesn't make any sense actually. I don't understand that. Billy Bob, you're gonna have to explain that to me in grave detail. Cause I don't think I understand. What is random access memorying somebody really mean? <laughs> Rye says, 10 print. We love you, Cameron. Cheers, 30, go to 10. Oh my God. They're a programmer. That's great. I love this thing. 
shaking that up and we're gonna pour this over top. Matadalan, Matadalan says, you should get yourself some big silicon ice cube trays, brother. Better for shaking. Big cubes, we go colder, less dilution. Though I think you'll want this to get a good amount of dilution. I do have some big ice cubes. The big ice cubes that I have though, I would crack it into the container here, but I'm still working on my cracking technique, which kind of sounds funny when, when I put it like that. So I opt for the smaller cubes in this case, understanding that there's gonna be a bit less control on dilution there. Uh, if I really wanted control on my dilution, I would probably go with the stirring of stuff, but alas, for another time. So now I'm straining this. If you didn't catch on, I'm straining this over top, and there is, wow, a layer forming. That's cool. Ever so carefully over the top. There we go. I have trust issues with this shaker, too, so I'm actually glad that the entire top didn't just, like, pop right off. Because that would be truly unfortunate, and I would be very sad. Um, but I'll get over it pretty quickly. I guess that's what I'm here to do. This is pretty, though! Oh, thank you so much! I wish I could take credit for all the beautiful stuff you see here. I guess I can, sometimes. Yeah, it's always about, always about having pride, you know? Pride in what you do. This actually looks... It looks... That is a really cool... Wow! Wow, actually, let me see if I can portray that. Get a better angle on that. I'll tilt this up a little bit. That is a really... That is a really, really cool gradient there. There we go. I'm liking that one. Ooh, this is giving me like, once upon a time I made this cocktail, which is apparently a reference to the movie cocktail called the Three-Toed Sloth. I think, I don't remember what guy was in that movie. Tom Hanks or something. I want to watch it. I've never actually watched it before. And eventually one day I will. But the Three-Toed Sloth had this really cool like crema effect. And I, I've, been, I've been in love with it ever since I saw it. It used slow gin and I don't like the slow gin that I have. So that's on me. Now what we could do with this is if we had any rose petals or edible flowers and stuff, we could pop that right up on top and it'd make a really, really nice garnish here. I don't have edible flowers. I've been trying to look for them. I should just suck it up and buy it off the internet but I'm just not ready to do that. So I'm gonna grab a pink cocktail umbrella in the least appropriate fashion and just kind of stick it right on top of this coupe glass because it's all that I have. And gosh, if I don't garnish the cocktail in a coupe glass, what kind of bartender am I? Here we go. Get ready folks, cause it's gonna rain deliciousness. Pfft. Ew. Hello you. Hello, you. Actually, I guess that doesn't really look very good from that perspective. Let's pop it up here a little bit. Hello. This reminds me of beach times on those shores that have white sand on them, like Aruba, maybe. I don't really know, to be honest. I'm taking the picture for the gram over here. Everybody smile. Smile for the grams. For the Instagrams. Oh, this one will have a shot of the, the stuff in the background. What an interesting perspective. Very nice. I like that very much. We'll slip it. Oh, it was Tom Cruise. I was wrong about that. Thank you for the correction, Meow Meow. I appreciate you greatly. This is so dang foamy. I hope it is. Oh, my goodness gracious. Yeah, I've been like... So, actually, here's a question. Does anybody bake out there? Because one of the things that I find, that I've found when I'm trying to find, like, edible flowers and stuff, is you can also make flowers out of, like, fondant and stuff, and I have absolutely no knowledge on that. Um, and so if there are any, like, wise folks out there who know better than I would, I yearn for you to share your knowledge with me. Because uh, if we all learn together, we'll learn as one. We are a powerful human race. Yes, we are. And I'm just making sure I took a picture of everything so far. We have. Check. We're good there. Bake? Like cake or cannabis? Doobie. Maybe. Like bake like, bake like a, whoa, whoa, actually, check this out. I just found something really weird. This is cool and weird and wonderful. We must all experience it together. So, I'm gonna, I think the, the cream liqueur, there must be an acidity to the rhubarb because there is now this layer up on top that you can pull at with the umbrella. I don't know if y'all can see that. That is super funky. Nice. It's a little disg- if, it, if you're queasy, this is not the place to look right now. That was kind of whack for a moment. Anyways. Interesting. Brad says, I saw some YouTube video about somebody making flowers out of buttercream. That would make sense. Isn't this weird? We like to experience weird things around here because we can experience the weird stuff so that you don't have to, or we can experience the weird stuff to share it with the world so that everybody else can experience the weird stuff in their own fancy and wonderful way. I'm gonna put my syrup away. 
Otherwise, it'll be bad like all my other syrup. Just kidding, the grenadine is still kicking. And uh, we'll taste this thing over here. So essentially, what we're gonna get first is we have that tequila and white chocolate thing up on top. Spoiler alert, I kind of know what that tastes like already and it's delicious, but we're gonna try it again and see if I prove myself wrong. It's so good. Oh my God, it's so good. I don't know what it is about white chocolate and tequila, but this is delicious. It's amazing. Like, like I have a hard time picking out some of the some of the characteristics from base spirits. I'm still getting up to the level where I can like drink and sip high enough proof spirits to really pick apart the flavors and stuff. I'm very early on in that process. But so one of the things that I find with this is this is so unapologetically tequila. Like there is this when I was younger, my future mother-in-law would buy me those little, like, I think, rum-filled chocolate container, chocolate balls from Disney's Epcot in the in the Mexican p pavilion, and there was just such this interesting combo of milk or dark chocolate and a rum. And I was like, it's just so, it's burny, it's bombastic, it's exciting, but it's also that comforting chocolate that I know already. This has that very same quality, except instead of milk chocolate or dark chocolate, this is white chocolate, very sweet, very creamy, especially because it's a cream liqueur. And and those tequila notes, as opposed to being more caramelly, molasses, very sugar forward, like a rum would be if you can piece those things apart, this is a lot more agave, I would suppose? And I don't exactly know exactly how to describe agave, but what I'm getting here is these more bright, herbaceous notes. It's almost like they might be it's even something minty in there, but it's not mint. It's not quite mint. There's something almost like fresh spice in there, but I don't exactly know what spice it is. It is Evidently agave, because tequila is a Blue Weber agave spirit, and the Reposado's been sitting in an oak barrel, so there might be notes of like vanilla and stuff that in there that might be the spicier, spicier notes that I'm getting, but it's delicious. And the fact that there's also ro the syrup on the bottom means that we're not even halfway through the cocktail yet, and it already tastes absolutely freaking amazing. <laughs> Rhubarb, isn't that poisonous? Rhubarbs are a little, oh, a little less acidic, uh, says Brad than lemon, so I can see that turning a little dairy in the Godiva. Rhubarb poisonous? Everything can be poisonous, I guess. I think stalks of rhubarb are less bad than leaves, just like every mushroom is edible at least once, and you eat the part that looks like the celery, it should be good, but inedible. I definitely did not pay attention to just doing the red part. Maybe I did when I made this. I'm not yet dead, and if you see me on stream next week, then evidently, I'm still not dead, and that's a good thing. So far, at least. So I'm actually get to the bottom of this. I'm gonna do... I'm gonna just try to see if I can take a big enough sip to just get everything at once and see how this changes. Oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. I'm gonna mix this up just a little bit. Oh, I can really taste that now. Wow. They're the... The Reposado, I think separated out just a little bit with that cream liqueur but mixing it all just just getting a little more agitated oh that is such a pleasantness now there's like a tartness oh, that's so delectable this is so crushable this is like you would serve this to me and i'd be like this is a tequila drink but it's a tequila drink like i never had before i have never had tequila taste this way before so this is kind of mind-blowing to me this might be like old news to more experienced people out there but this is awesome <laughs> and i'm surprised that it took me this long to figure out that this is a thing because of some recipe i found online and definitely tried to copy because you gotta try more things out there this is so good next week <laughs> Next week's theme, so you survived self-poisoning, which I want to see, but uh, I'll be at a Matchbox 20 concert. Ooh, enjoy that one. What kind of music do they do? I feel like I've heard of Matchbox 20 before, and I feel like it's... It strikes me as a grunge band, but I don't really know, to be honest. That's great. This umbrella is getting in the way. And I missed the bucket, so that's fine. That's delicious. I was really happy to see that there was something that caused for, called for rose syrup this week because I really want to try to get the most mileage out of that rhubarb and rose syrup that I can before, like, you know, goes bad. Or before it just becomes another one of the syrups that's been sitting in the fridge for way too long. That is great. I love that. I think there's a little bit of that. There's, a, there's an interesting game of texture also being played here. The syrup is very thick. It's very viscous. The cream liqueur is also quite thick, but a lot more smooth. It's not, it's, it's, it's a, it's heavy on the tongue. I will definitely give that much, but this basically tastes like you're drinking your ice cream after it's melted. And it's, you know, if you had like a little maraschino cherry up on top and you got other flavors and stuff, it's mixed all together. This is like a melted rose 
one scoop of rose, one scoop of white chocolate, one scoop of agave flavored ice cream that melted a bit together. And now we're here and it's delightful. Delightful indeed. Let me put that off to the side. Because uh, I'm still, I'm going to take a couple more sips of my espresso martini back here. My eyes are beginning to droop. It gets so tiring bartending. Obviously. Duh. Right out there saying, boiling the leaves of rhubarb and then drinking the stock makes an untraceable poison. I didn't have any leaves on this one. Now, when I bought those stocks, there were no leaves on them. So the Pennsylvania Dutch, who I believe I bought the rhubarb from, know what they're doing so as to not kill the local populace, unless that's a part of their plan. In which case, I am susceptible. All right. Excuse me, get a little reflexy back here. I apologize. Brad says, when I bought these rhubarbs, there were no leaves on it, your honor. <laughs> as if I was defending myself. There were no leaves on my rhubarb. I couldn't have killed him. I, I didn't I didn't do it. I just tried to make tea out of rhubarb. I, I'm a mixologist, you know? I like to boil things. I like to mix things. I like to infuse things. How was I supposed to know it was going to kill somebody? Untraceable, he says. And the last cocktail recipe he does because he was sent to jail. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, rhubarb. <laughs> Barbara, Barbara rhubarb. I don't know where I'm going with this. Anyway, Brad's like, I have a bottle of rhubarb gin. It's basically 95% sugar. I can imagine that being so, to be honest. I think I saw, I think, oh, no, no, I saw rhubarb gin. Actually, I was on, ooh, I was sifting through Instagram the other day, and I was looking at the, in, the, the stories of other cocktail creators out there, and I believe it was Gin Before Breakfast, I believe is the name of the account, was combining rhubarb gin and cachaca together. I freaking love, I'm going to go on a small tangent for a moment here. I love cachaca. I've only ever had one. It's LeBlanc cachaca, and it's buried back there. It's got a greenish-looking bottle thing. Smells highly of like really, really ripe bananas and stuff. It tastes amazing. I love the way it is. And probably my, you know, it's very good to make caipirinhas with, obviously. And it's great. So evidently I saw that, I saw like a little plastic bag that said rhubarb gin and cachaca written on it. And I was like, I have to ask, are you mixing rhubarb gin and cachaca? And he's like, yeah, I am. And I got the name, I got the, uh, I think it was Nova Fogo was the cachaca, which is like the main cachaca that I know of. Uh, but I have LeBlanc cause that's, Available at my local liquor store. Uh, I don't know any rhubarb gins. I need some recommendations there. It's like Whitley or something like that. Oh, nice. Lol, sir, we got a report that you bought a ton of rhubarb leaves from the farmer's market. We have questions for you. Do you could you imagine somebody knocking on my door and being like, we heard about the rhubarb. What do you mean, officers? I don't know anything about rhubarb. Let me see your refrigerator. What is this bottle that says rhubarb and rose syrup? <laughs> a friend of mine? <laughs> you caught me pink-handed. You got me. Brad's like, you need like 0.05 parts rhubarb gin to anything else. It's potent. Makes things really, it's, I, I put a lot, I put like four or five stalks of rhubarb in this and I'm not dead yet. I've drank this multiple times before and um, so far we're all good. So they have my entire testimony here. Like they're not even gonna need to knock on my door. Like they can just tune into, if the local Philadelphia police tunes into my streams and try to indict me or something, that'd be freaking impressive and very stupid on my part. Just saying y'all, I didn't murder anybody nobody was killed cocktail time what's the next cocktail we have so what have we gotten kind of gone through so far in terms of chocolate 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 thinking of chocolate right when i think of chocolate there's the Hers there's like hershey syrup and stuff there is like you know cocoa that you can shave on top of things like a garnish you can infuse chocolate we have some chocolate washed bourbon that's currently sitting in the freezer we'll get to that last um you can combine chocolate milk together with vodka basically to make alcoholic chalky milk it's very easy to do you mint chocolate chip is also a type of chocolate i guess i'm guessing it's more on the white chocolate span of things than other stuff White chocolate liqueur, regular chocolate liqueur, dark chocolate liqueur, all that stuff, chocolate, chocolate. And when we're talking about chocolate, the best thing to do with chocolate is to just stack more chocolate on top of each other. I think one of, I think, not not my favorite because it's just too much chocolate for me. I'm not really a fudge guy, to be honest, because it just gets too chocolatey. But I know some people in my life who are big fans of like, like double, triple, quadruple chocolate chunk cookies and pies and fudges and stuff. I'm not really into that stuff. However, as it comes to cocktails, evidently in one of my cocktail books, namely, 
the geeky bartender book fits backwards and upside down the geeky bartender book there's a cocktail that references i believe the show red dwarf a british comedy series sci-fi comedy series um that basically is a chocolate 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 it's a quadruple chocolate milkshake but it's also alcoholic and i was like chocolate 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 beer milkshake and that's the next cocktail we're doing beer milkshake evidently it's a reference to red dwarf i've never seen a red dwarf i only know soul the big yellow one the center of our gal the center of our solar system beautiful i guess dude suns are awesome big 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 balls of plasma it's good stuff i assure you i mean at least so i've been told it was called beer milkshake, right? Beer, it's funny, it's a beer milkshake. You would not think at all that this has anything to do with chocolate, but it do, that it do, four times over. I love that. Beer milkshake. It's beer, but it's also a milkshake. It's also got chocolate in there, really, who gives a shit? This board is way too wet for me to write properly. Beer, milkshake. Live studio audience claps for us. Thank you very much, dearest. My only live studio audience. That's great. We have, um, I so- I wanted a break from drawing on my arm. Oh, that's great. Drawing on your arm. What have you been doing to your arm, dearest? Oh, I've been learning my hand muscles again. You want to show that to the audience? My lovely arm muscles. Yeah, I mean, this is this is interesting. Anna's drawing out her arm muscles. That's cool. So- Brad says hi. Hi. Hi, dear. She's waving back, I assure you. Muscles. I just learned there's layers of muscle. I know there's you, layers you keep, of muscle. You keep going. I'm gonna gather ingredients while oh, you do okay. so. Yeah, no, go for uh, it. No, my better side is this side because I can actually like draw on it flatly. Hi, Brad. Hi, everybody. Okay. Is Anna doing um, stuff? Um, let's see, what do I have? I have the Predator Terries. Oh God, this is easy for me to see. I guess from here. I don't know. All your flexors are on this side. You guys have no idea what that means. <laughs> Hey, they might. You don't know their occupations. All your flexors are on the medial side. All your all your extensors are on your lateral side. So medial is the side that's closest to you, and your lateral side is the side that's farther away from you. Um, you have a supinator and a pronator. I don't know. They're like wonky. Drawing on her arm is slightly more fun. Yeah, I don't transcribe notes well. <laughs> Karen, do, do, what do you think? Should I get this tatted? You won't even let me get a tattoo of a small X on my wrist. Yeah, I won't get this tatted. <laughs> I want to get a little X on my wrist because I wouldn't be Cameron with an X without at least one X on my body. One. No, I don't want to do I that. I want to put a little blue X right here on my wrist one day. So then when they're like, I'm like, Cameron with an X, and they'll be like, where's the X? I'll be like, <laughs> One day. Like a light blue one or a dark blue one? We'll discuss that when we I get to it. I think it should it. be light blue. I'm better with light blue. 1,000 followers. That's the goal. That's the goal. <laughs> Drawing our arms. Visible. This is See? great. The X the is X invisible. Is, I, mean, I love so... that. Now you need to make it UV. Oh my god. The X is invisible. I guess it's silent, so I guess it's a metaphor for invisible. I mean, basically, visible. all it pops up on, if you can see it, would be like almost like a white scar. So it looks cool. Oh god. I don't know. I like them. I think they look better. What I do with my body, the canvas that my lord and mother <gasps> gave me, is my prerogative. I know. Yes. I'm not supposed to have opinions. You can have opinions. My opinions is I don't want a tattoo on you. You can- don't. Oh, well you can have your opinions, <laughs> but I want to put a tat on my body. Can it be like a light tattoo? No. Maybe? I don't Would know. It look better to I don't know. Why are we discussing this? Because I'm on stream. I don't want to draw on my hand. But well, don't you actually, want to talk about chocolate, 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 chocolate? There's supposed to be only four chocolates in there, actually. Chocolate, 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 chocolate. chocolate Work that body. Throw some punches. Chocolate, 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 chocolate. Okay. I will leave now. Goodbye, guys. I will stop. Good. So while you guys were being distracted by Anna's anatomy le le uh, lecture, and <laughs> sexy, I pulled out a blender. And I also pulled out a couple other things too. Did you see me do that? I'm sneaky like that. They call me ye old sneak. I was really hoping this would be a <laughs> an exercise that Anna would correct my form on. I know how to throw a punch, sorta kinda. I could have corrected 
correct your form. Okay, well, she could have suggested corrected my form, but that evidently. Nice, because okay. Sarah's learning how to use them with like with weights during the morning. I'm weightlifting now. Another one. Do some fire hydrants. You can't really see me doing this, but I'm lifting my arms up. Okay, one. You bend your leg like you're peeing on fire hydrant. Ooh, not that far close. I'm just gonna take your leg. We're gonna go back a little bit. Right about there. It, go it goes on a diagonal this way. <laughs> Knock it me over, my dear. <laughs> wow. Pretend you're a dog peeing on a fire hydrant. I'm not a dog! I have a significantly okay. different genome than canines! I don't know how to piss on a fire hydrant. I have a significantly different way of doing so if I had to, though. You cannot see this, but I am giggling so much. This is the whole point of this stuff. This is this is great. I need to give you better exercises. Yeah, this this exercise list is two years too old. We've been meaning to update it, but Anna's been studying for her exams, and so she is very heads down for that. So naturally, that's not a priority for her right now. Any, <laughs> anyways, so as we get to this next cocktail, this is basically chocolate, 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 right? So what we have as a part of this is we have part one of chocolate is our chocolate stout. There is a beer back here. This is Grand Keiko Chocolate Stout Trogues Independent Brewing. That's from around here, I believe. I believe Trogues is a... Uh, is a Pennsylvania brand. Hershey Park, over in Hershey, PA. Yeah, Trogues. Um, so it uses cocoa. It's a chocolate stout. And so I went to the store today, got myself a chocolate stout. I just like, I love porters. Chocolate stout, or this is a chocolate porter actually. No, it's a chocolate stout, which works. We could have used chocolate anything. I almost bought a chocolate vanilla porter, or chocolate uh, cherry porter that I almost bought, um, but it was like $30 for four bottles. And this was $14 for six bottles. Actually, it might've only been $12. It was a steal comparatively. And so I went with this. And I also think I already like their brand. That's part one of the chocolate. What we're gonna need to do is, this is a whole big old milkshake. So we're gonna fill this entire thing up. This is a serving size of two to four. I'm gonna adjust this down to be half that. So that's what we're gonna do here. This bottle itself is how many milliliters? Ooh, it's got Galena hops in them. That's cool. Oh, how many ounces in your bottle? Tell me your ounceage. 12 fluid ounces. We're gonna pour three quarters of this bottle into this blender. I have a blender, by the way. We're putting ice cream in this. That's part number three. We'll get there. I promise you that we will. I'm gonna take my little bottle opener over here. You know, classic beer styles. I'd also crack, I know how to crack bottles on surfaces. Um, but I really don't feel like making another mark on the bar in the next today. Um, but I can, I have figured out how to open up these beer bottles inside of the refrigerator. And this, it's just like, like a mark of manhood, I guess. I'm very proud of that. So we needed three quarters of, of the bottle in here, eight fluid ounces. If you wanted to scale this up for, this is like a one to two person milkshake. If you wanted to scale it up to two to four, just pour the whole bottle in there. And, um, honestly, I'm considering just pouring the whole bottle in there. Actually, how does this thing even taste? Bitter chocolate. Very bitter chocolate. I love that. Billy Bob says, hola, to which I respond, hello. This is so frothy. Oh my goodness gracious. Just pour that whole bottle in there. We're going for it. If we're making milkshakes, we're making milkshakes for everybody. Billy Bob, you're getting one. Brad's getting one. Larix is still hanging around. But Larix can have one too. Everybody gets, a, everybody gets one. I do have six full bottles of this. It's great. Eat it, eat it, you say. I don't really have much to eat over here, but I do, I will take a sip of my espresso martini. Thank you for the reminder, Billy Bob. I needed a piece of that. All right, so after we've added our chocolate stout, the ratios are gonna be a little bit off. Instead of eight, actually, you know what? We'll, we'll scale it up a little bit. Instead of serving size of one, do 1. 1.5. 1. 1.5, oh, hello there. I want 1.5, please. One. I spilled absinthe on my Surface keyboard, so I don't have access to an easy interface to look at my recipe list. 1.5. Did you know spilling absinthe on a Surface Go keyboard kills it? Now you know. I need a new computer for this stuff. All right, 12 fluid ounces. Now we're working in terms of 12 fluid ounces of our chocolate stout. I will also put the recipe for whatever proportions in the Discord later on the cocktail blog. 
I do love beer-based cocktails, so long as they are High Life and Campari. They're, they're the only combination. Miller High Life, the champagne of beers, plus Campari, or April, I guess, or some other like red aperitif out there. It all works out. The next thing we're gonna need, including our entire bottle of chocolate stout, is one and a half fluid ounces, or 22 milliliters, 44 milliliters of creme de caco. I've got some J Queens over here, creme de caco a la vanille. I don't really know what that means. I'm guessing it's of vanilla, but I don't speak French, I guess. Here we go, bottle cap. Lucky bottle cap to whoever needs it. All right, so our creme de caco gets 1.5 ounces. Got 44. Oh, I uh, did not overfill, we good. Bop. It's our first piece of liqueur in this one. There's actually not too much liquor in this, to be honest. Because the other stuff, everything else in here is not, oh, I guess there's beer in there, so that'll also do it too. I'll put my creme de caco away. I don't need that. It's like my least favorite way to add chocolate to a cocktail is creme de caco, and I think it's just because I bought Jaquins, and out of all the things that I've bought from Jaquins, I'm just like not, like it doesn't satisfy me. And like, I don't think there's anything wrong with Jaquins, I just, I don't know, it just doesn't do it for me. Next, we're gonna add three quarters of a pint of chocolate ice cream. What I did, I went downstairs and I picked, I got a big thing of chocolate ice cream. I mean, I filled up this entire container with chocolate ice cream. So I am just going to take the container that I had frozen for up here. Got some chocolate stuff in it. I'm just going to add it. Just pop it on in there. I honestly might need more chocolate ice cream, all things considered. Why am I using a knife? I have spoons for this very purpose. Get on in there. I was half a pint. Let's see. I, I have more than a pint downstairs. There you go. Get all up in there. There you go, bud. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go get more chocolate ice cream. I think it requires more. So, uh, please excuse me for a moment. Enjoy the lo-fi music. I'll be back. I'm going downstairs to the big freezer to get more chocolate ice cream. Chocolate, chocolate, chocolate time. Chocolate, chocolate, more chocolate. Chocolate around here. Oh, it's Dutch chocolate flavor by Turkey Hill. Premium ice cream. We were just talking about premium quality products earlier. That's exciting. I love chocolate. He says, making a chocolate, 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 chocolate cocktail. Here's the rest of the chocolate ice cream. This contains 1.44 quarts. Alexa, how many quarts are in three quarters of a pint? I love it when you don't listen to me. That's okay. I'm going to just Google it. Hashtag not a sponsor. Turkey Hill. Never heard of them. Never heard of these guys before. Let's see. Let's do three quarters of a pint in quartz. 0.375 US quartz. That's not a lot of this at all. I'm just going to do a couple more scoopfuls in here and completely wing it. There we go. I'll take my bar spoon and just do what I was meant to do. Unapologetically scoop out ice cream in a very comically sized large tub of Dutch chocolate ice cream. It's what I was made to do. It's fresh from the freezer. This is kind of difficult to do. Yeah, come on. Lever arm distance. Lever arm distance. Yeah, physics. All right, we got it. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, it's cold. I have very sensitive teeth. I don't know why I did that. Wow. I'm going to try to put this back in my freezer so it doesn't melt. It worked. I have like three chilled glasses in there. And I really have no intention of using them. So I don't even know why they are in there. Anyway, chocolate ice cream. Chocolate ice cream. Nice. Loud noises. We have added... An entire bottle of chocolate stout. We've added one and a half ounces or about 44 milliliters of creme de caco. And we've added as best to three quarters of a pint of chocolate ice cream that we can. And now we're gonna add three quarters of an ounce, about 22 milliliters, just straight up chocolate sauce. Just add in the chocolate sauce in there. I'm not even gonna bother measuring this one. I'm just going for it. That is definitely more than three quarters of an ounce. But you know what? We are unapologetically chocolating this time because that's the screen theme. And that's quite literally it. That's all we do. We blend this thing to oblivion. Uh, it says it says apparently not to overblend. 
So I'm going to try not to overblend as best as I possibly can. I'm cleaning out one of my measuring jiggers over here because I just don't need them sticky. Not this time around, at least. Not this time. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend this. I really don't have a lot of distance between this blender and the microphone. So here comes a loud sound. I'm going to push y'all away for a little bit so we don't blind our ears. That's how that works. And we're going to put this on milkshake mode because there is a milkshake mode. This is Hamilton, the blender. Don't ask me why. It said not to blend it too much, so I'm not going to blend it very much. Here we go, y'all. This is technically a cocktail, right? It's got alcohol in it, right? It's got beer in it, I guess. It's a beer cocktail. Could have done this on a beer cocktail stream. That's great. Drizzle some chocolate sauce along the inside of a milkshake glass and pour it into the mixture. Great. I will do almost exactly that. So let's grab some... Let's see. Let me unplug this guy over here. You don't need a blender anymore. There we go. Put this guy down here. Oh, I'll clean you later. Up up our angle. Hello there. Hello there. Milkshake time. There we go. Hello. All right, time to make a milkshake. So evidently what we're supposed to do, one of the things that you can do with chocolate cocktails, if they are unapologetically chocolatey, you can just take chocolate syrup and just like put it on the inside of the glass. Just like go freaking wild with it. So like, that's what I'm going to do. A little bit of chocolate at the bottom. I'm gonna start it from the center and kind of go up the sides a little bit. Kind of, kind of go a little round. Kind of, just kind of get a little wild with it. Essentially, you're gonna do something like that. It looks kind of like a brown murder scene or a feces scene, I suppose. I don't know. There's, there's stuff that could be interpreted from this. Um, but it's chill. It's chill. And now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take the blended mixture and pour it inside. And of course. You can do it up however you would do your own milkshakes. Personally, I like whipped cream and a cherry. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna add whipped cream and a cherry to this guy. Ooh, it's a little chunky. I also like my milkshakes that way. Clearly my milkshakes have brought at least one boy to the yard and that boy is me. I like that. So now what you're gonna do is you're just gonna do it up the way that you want to. And the way that I want to is to add some whipped cream and a cherry. So naturally, what do you do? Grab yourself some whipped cream. According to this can, I'm supposed to close it, shake it lightly. And then just really go for it. This is alcoholic and I feel absolutely no regret. I'll put the whipped cream away, I'll grab myself a cherry. You can really put as many cherries as you're feeling on top of there. I'm gonna put maybe one for chance. I'm gonna grab one up from the depths. Oh, that's a cute little cherry. Hello there. <laughs> yes, indeed. Awesome. And I'll put a straw in it because that's the way I drink my milkshakes. Put a straw. I like this straw. I'm gonna use this straw. There we go. Pop that right in there. This is how your milkshake looks. There we go. Nice milkshake. That is a dense cherry. It is a very dense cherry. It wants to go all the way to the bottom. I think it's currently traveling its way to the bottom. That's incredible. What a nice looking boozy milkshake. I actually kind of like the way that looks. Get one of my angles too. It is a milkshake. It is a milkshake indeed. There we go. Very good indeed. Did I forget things? I did not! Sweet! Pop on back to my angle so I can give this thing a taste. Woo! This is our beer milkshake. So essentially, this is mostly that that chocolate stout that we had earlier, that Trogues, Trogues, Trogues uh, chocolate stout over there. So I'm actually curious to see how this all combines together. Ooh. Oh yeah. It's still very much that beer flavor. It very much tastes like the chocolate stout that we used was used in it with just that extra chocolatiness. It is like, if I imagine a chocolate beer, the kind of chocolate flavor that I'm going to get out of more or less any chocolate beer is probably not going to be like that Hershey chocolate kiss beer, but this tastes like somebody quite literally took a Hershey kiss and like 
macerated it into some beer. Specifically, like, I guess it's some type of ale type beer. Not anything super particular there. It's not like the beer has a super potent, like, spicefulness to it, kind of like a Blue Moon does with those, like, coriander and stuff notes to it. Um, it uses Galena hops. I don't know what the flavor profile of Galena hops is. It's not super... Actually, it is, it is bitter. It is bitter in the way that chocolate is bitter, but because of the chocolate flavoring or however they do this, it reminds me a lot of just like kind of drinking baking chocolate almost. And if I had to drink chocolate in any way, this is it. I really like that some of my sips, this is not very well mixed together, and honestly, I'm okay with that. There is There are some sips that taste a lot more like the ice cream, there are some notes that taste a little bit more like the Hershey chocolate, and there are some that are really potently that chocolate stout. And there's a bit of a sourness there that I really, really enjoy. That I think it's the same type of sourness that I really like some for my favorite coffees and espressos. That kind of flavor component, I'm a huge fan of. And this is great. And evidently, if there was anything that was gonna make me watch a, a British sci-fi comedy show, this would be the one to do it. Again, this came from a book that I absolutely love. I acquired it very early on in my mixological career called The Geeky Bartender by Cassandra Reeder, The Geeky Chef. It's got a lot of really cool episodes in it. And I think the first, I think the first big bar with an X stream, or maybe it was the second one that I did, was way back, almost two years ago, was utilizing the recipes from that book. And I look back on those days very fondly. And that cherry is just straight up gone. It is, it's in there. It is in there good. Very good indeed. All right, well, I'm gonna put this off to the side. I still have my espresso martini to, to drink. Actually, I'm just gonna go for it. So tasty, oh my God. And it's so very tasty. I love that very much. I love that very much. So actually, I had a really, really large dinner. I drank a lot of water before the stream. So actually, I have to go downstairs and take a little break. So what I'm gonna do is very quickly, I'm gonna uh, put the cocktail angle up so y'all can continue looking at, let, let's, what are we gonna make you stare at? I'm gonna make all y'all stare at this little guy for a little while. I will be back as quick as I possibly can, but in the meantime, enjoy the lo-fi. Enjoy this little dude. I'll be back in the hottest of moments. There I am going downstairs, leaving the people to do what they do when the cameras cut around. Spooky. Quick, everybody calls a rampage. The mods are asleep and the broadcaster's away. What do we do? I have returned. Whoa, photo time. Wow, what was all that that I just missed? That's great. I kind of I kind of want the AFK scene for the bar to just be a happy little frog dude. We can make that happen. I had been using the parrots for so long just because I freaking love the party parrot. It was the vibe. Still remains to be the vibe, even after this many years. It's good stuff. But honestly, this little frog dude, that's very bar with an X energy. I will take that. Bar with an X energy. B W X E. It's like B D B D E, but it's B W X E. Bixi. Put this on a little coaster over here. That's a very. I really like this milkshake. Yeah, whatever. I'm, I'm going with it. The espresso martini is gone. I love espresso martinis. This is my new drink. This is my new drink over here. This is delicious. I really like that chocolate beer. I like, I was really looking forward to buying that chocolate stout because I really like stout beers and I really like chocolate. So this is gonna be something that I could enjoy even beyond just the stream that you see before you today. It's great. 
And um, that'll be, um, maybe I'll find something else to do with that in my free time, it seems. I don't really know. So let's see, what other, what, I think I had a, quite a few recipes um, ready for this evening. Oh my god, there is so many. I cannot wait to get that fly trap thing. These guys are just going for it. Sad. We covered the beer milkshake. We did the Ferrero Cher espresso martini. We did the vanilla rose. We did the Dwarven Delights. We did the coconut mint chip. There's another, there's one more cocktail that I want to do before we play around with the chocolate washed bourbon. And that is something called, it's it's called a chocolate martica. I oh, I found it on bitterman's.com. They make bitters and stuff. So they would use you would usually use the bitters that they would produce for this next cocktail here. Um, I'm going to use a different type of bitters for it. We'll get there in a second. And it's kind of that idea, the last, like, um, I guess the second to last concept of chocolate that I kind of wanted to play around with is the idea that, like, there are chocolate cocktails that exist out there which are chocolate versions of other cocktails. For example, a chocolate Manhattan, or I guess a chocolate espresso martini, or a chocolate Negroni. There are tons of different cocktails that call themselves chocolate. And then the cocktail. I don't know what a martica is, so I'm not going to go into that for a while here. But this kind of covers the same concept of a lot of times when they call like something chocolatey, they kind of only they kind of switch out one component, and it's one of the very subtle components. Like for example, when I've had chocolate Manhattans in the past, they have been made just the regular way with your rye whiskey and your sweet vermouth. But instead of using like Angostura bitters, you use like chocolate bitters or chocolate mole bitters or cacao bitters or something like that, and like. It's chocolatified, but when I imagine, when I first heard the term like chocolate Negroni or chocolate Manhattan, I was like, oh my God, it's gonna taste like Hershey, but also like the Manhattan or the Negroni. And like, I was a little, just a slight bit disappointed that it didn't actually taste like that. So a lot of times when you find like these chocolate cocktails, it's kind of like just the original cocktail or like a slight variation on it with a very quick flip out with something that is not necessarily always insignificant but I guess not necessarily the main player of the cocktail that you're modifying here. So this next one is uh, Chocolate Martica, and it's a more or less equal parts cocktail with, it's, it's a little bit more than equal parts. We'll, we'll get to it. I'll, I'll show you exactly how to make it. It's got rum, cognac, sweet vermouth, maraschino, and some mole bitters in it. A, a flavor combo that I was like, I've never heard of this one before, so I'm gonna go for it. I'm just gonna go for that. As I race things over here, move on to the next section. How's everyone's evening going? Let's see, what time is it now? It is 1021 on a Wednesday. I'm doing just fine. I hope everybody else is doing fine as well. Shout out to, when I went to the store, uh, when I went to Giant, there was an employee that served me at the bar, the bar counter, and evidently they were not they were not doing super well. I was like, hey, how you doing? And they were like, honestly, I just want to quit my job. And I was like, really? I was really, I felt really, really bad. I felt really, really bad for her, and I really didn't have quite the words to say. And it's not like this individual is going to find this, but I, you know what, wherever you find yourself in your life, like, I just hope you know that, like, the now is not the later, and that there is so much room for improvement if you have the wherewithal and, like, kind of the mindset to be able to get yourself out of a bad situation. If that means quitting your job and doing your passions, do it. But if you've got your goals and stuff and, you know, who you want to be in mind, then go forth to that stuff. Anyway, that's my little attempt to pick up the person who is currently down today. So, keep with that if you will positive mental attitude, which is a very myopic way of kind of giving encouragement, but that's all I got right now. So I'll keep on smiling for you if I have to. Brad says, all parts are equal, but some parts are a little bit more, a little bit less equal. That's true there. So the chocolate martica is a stirred drink. You mix everything in a mixing glass and then you stir it out over top, uh, over in a cocktail glass. I got a chilled cocktail glass or two or three. So I'm gonna use this one. Uh, so let me get myself a stirring apparatus. I'll use that one. That sounds good. I'll mix everything together. I'm gonna pop the cocktail angle over here. Usually, I have the angle on me just kind of talking this entire time, but I, I feel, I feel that maybe we might want to just watch the entire process happen in the background. So, uh, I'm gonna try that. I don't really usually do that. All right, let's go there. So I'm gonna grab myself a big old ice cube. Now, I believe it was, I think it was Matt earlier? Maybe it might be misquoted. Who points out that when we're using a shaker, right? You don't really have super much control over the dilution that's happening there. And depending on how big an ice cube you use, like bigger ice cubes have a lot more like the thermal capacity. They're gonna like you know they're gonna melt a lot 
less quickly than smaller ice cubes would just have in general more surface area that melt a little bit faster. And when you use a stirring method like this, you more or less control exactly how much dilution that you have in your cocktail based off of the temperature difference that you have. Usually you kind of watch it, you'll do a certain number of revolutions, or you'll look at the side of your mixing glass and see whether it's starting to condensate and stuff in just the right way. Some people have developed the experience for stuff like that. I certainly don't have it. I think stirring things is cool though, and so that's what I'm gonna do for this one over here because it also tells me that I'm supposed to. So the first thing we're gonna add is some Jamaican rum. Now this one, usually when I go for a Jamaican rum, I'm gonna go for something that like, like something dark, like a, um, like a Myers rum or something, but this one specifically calls for, it's actually very interesting, the recipe that I found on the Bitterman's called for Appleton VX. I don't have Appleton VX, but I do have this Appleton Signature uh, Single Estate Jamaican rum. So I think the type of flavor profile that the, at least the Bitterman's are going for, is something a little less on the dark caramelly kind of molassesy side, and something a little more, I, I hesitate to use the term funk because I don't quite know exactly what funk means. I've got, I know what banana funk is because I've had cachaca before, but there are a lot of rums out there that do funk in various different ways. And I'll be honest, I am not a good source on that yet. I am still in the learning process for that. So we'll add a full ounce or about 30 milliliters of our Appleton or some other type of Jamaican rum, one that is close to the VX. I didn't do my research on the VX, so I don't know how different this one is as opposed opposed to the VX that exists out there, but this is the closest that I got, so I'm going to utilize it as best as I can. The next ingredient that we'll need is some cognac, and actually, I do have the brand that they recommend here. They're using a Covassier VSOP, or just VS, not the VSOP. Um, very I think VS means very special. I don't remember what VSOP means, um, but I got this one. What those notes are, I don't know too much about brandy. There's a lot, there's... Of the cocktail creators that I watch, uh, not a lot of them talk about the various aspects of brandy, so I don't know too much about how to describe it based off of my own experience. It's just, it's fruity. As opposed to a brandy, cognacs are a little more... aged, I suppose? They're a little more, like, spice for and by spice I mean more of a piquant type thing, like more cabinet spice, like cinnamon and otherwise. Not specifically with Cabossier, I don't remember what the flavor notes are on that. Um, I'm just gonna walk in here. Eventually I wanna do a whole exploration of cognac and brandy and stuff, but I don't have enough cognac and or brandies to be able to go dive that deep into it. So not for now, maybe a little bit later. So far though, the aromas that I'm getting off of this glass are very, very pleasant. It's that, it's kind of like, um, it is almost bakery-like, it's almost toffee-like from what I'm getting, the combination of the cognac and the rum there so far. Next what we need is a full ounce of sweet vermouth. Now this, Bitterman's recommends specifically using Carpana Antica. I've got Carpana Antica, so I'm gonna use Carpana Antica. I have found in my own personal experience that there can be a huge difference with the kind of characteristics you get depending on what vermouth you use. And being that I actually have some Carpana Antica, I'm going to utilize this. And one of the things that I like doing with my vermouths, because they wind up sticking around for a little while, is I'll get the smaller bottle. That's one That's one technique. Keep it cold. That's another technique. But I'll also, um, I have a little wine preserver that I use for some of my wine, uh, some of my own personal wine ventures and stuff. Just an inert gas that sits up on top. I put a little bit in there. One, one, two, three. Just a little bit. And... It should preserve the flavor for a little bit longer. Is it a little old wives tale? I don't really know, but I've been sold into it, so I'm gonna keep on utilizing that. To me, it makes my makes my Negronis and Manhattans taste better, or at least consistently okay since the very beginning. Brad says, despite how much you say, Carpano Antica, hashtag not a sponsor. I'm not. Nobody sponsored me to do anything yet. The viewership numbers aren't there, they say. It's fine, we're having fun with this, therefore it doesn't really matter. Although, yo, <laughs> hit me up. Okay, so next we're gonna add a quarter of an ounce of maraschino liqueur. Evidently there can only be one. There's multiple maraschinos, but I've got Luxardo. And its bottle is so comically large that it has to go on the top shelf of my bar back here because like it doesn't fit anywhere else. And I actually just bought a bottle of limoncello the other day, uh, I think something per, something de Roma and it has the same disposition. It's so damn tall that I can't keep it with the rest of the limoncellos. I can't keep this with the rest of the fruit forward spirits because it's just too damn tall. It's incredible. Brad also says, also maybe the Negroni is good because you have like an, uh, an ounce of inert gas in there. That's possible. Maybe that just makes it good, you know? That's what it makes the, that's the real key to a, a good Negroni. It's a little bit of inert gas. 
That's the key here. That's what we're doing here. And then what we also need to add to this glass is two dashes of chocolate mole bitters. Uh, I don't have bitter mint chocolatel. It's got an X in the beginning. I'm pronouncing that sh. Chocolatel mole bitters. But I do have, there's another uh, Twitch tender out there who's in the midst of a bit of a move right now uh, named Colin 012. And they made these mole bitters. They are very powerful on the more pepper, kind of spicy pepper notes. So I'm going to use, I'm going to use these bitters that we went in one of his little things over there. If you're just in like winning things and stuff, Colin's is the place to go. I had a little bit of a, a little bit more there because I like I like my bitters a little more strong. Very good stuff there. I'll also say too, that uh, our friend Larix out there, I believe also makes bitters as well. I've never sampled any of his bitters before, but those are just two people that you should that you should check out. I will try my best to shout out the both of them as we continue with our stuff back here. Shout out, Colino, one, two. Did I do that right? Hell yeah, I did. That's the first guy, he's the one who made the bitters. I'm gonna stir this thing up over here. Stir it up, I say. I know up is its own term, but it's okay. We'll stir this, and we'll train it into a chilled coupe glass. That's just the way that we're going to do it. Feels good. Feels good, man. I'm just kind of... I don't really have a method. I don't really have a time that I count for stirring things. I just kind of stir until I feel like it. The nuance of how diluted my drinks are, I haven't quite gotten the chance to... I haven't really found the right balance for that yet. So in the meantime, I'm going to just keep on exploring, and still, every once in a while, I get like... I like... A piece of wow, that tastes good. Like a like an epiphany every once in a while, and then it just makes sense. It just hasn't made sense for me yet, but I'm sure one day it will, and we'll get there eventually. So we're gonna strain this into a cocktail glass. It doesn't say that I need to, to strain with anything. Um, I don't really know what this would go well with, um, garnish wise. Anyways, ooh, that was a very odd sound. I'm hesitant to just shave chocolate over top of it. This doesn't feel like a shaved chocolate kind of thing. I feel it's just gonna get in the way up on top. If I had like Keiko husk of the Keiko bean. I would totally use that for this. Um, but I have not been able to get my hands on a cocoa bean, so maybe one day. And that is our drink. And this came from Bitterman's. This came from the Bitterman's website. Pop that away. Don't, definitely don't need my, my um, thing anymore over here. I'll also say too, uh, on the mention of bitters and whatnot, I know Larix out there does this stuff as well. So I wanted to pop that out as well. I think I, I did that wrong, so hold on one second. I can't see from this angle. Oh, I can do it over here. What am I doing? I can't see from the other angle, but I can shout from over here. I have to wait 11 seconds for giving out a shout out. Oh, what? Okay, well, that, that would make sense. All right, well, how unfortunate. In any case, we continue forward with all of this good stuff over here for at least another 11 seconds. This is our cocktail. It looks really good, honestly. Put a little bit left in there. A little bit left of whatever we were measuring out before. There we go. Let me try this again. The amount of time it'll take me. How dare that, uh... How dare that Bezos not let me shout out more wonderful individuals on this platform more than once. How dare you. Go check out Larix. He also does stuff as well. Alright, cool. So that's our, that's our chocolate martica cocktail. This is what we have. It's a very, it's a very plain looking guy. It's got a nice, like, reddish color to it that I'm actually... This, this looks really, really good, honestly. Very, very good. I love it. it. This looks almost crimson from my angle. That is beautiful looking. Wow. So that's good. So on the nose, what do we got over here? I smell the maraschino in there. I've got a little bit of the maraschino, and I smell... I want to say it's the rum but it might be the cognac. I'm having a hard time piecing out the difference between your the, the cognac and the rum. So it could be either one of them. I don't really know. It smells great though. And this was only slightly chocolate. It's called a chocolate martika, but it's only slightly chocolate because we added some mole bitters into it. It was like a spicy chocolate type bitters. Mmm. Mmm, that's pleasant. That is... The maraschino in there, very potent to Brad's point. This is, maraschino liqueur is just like, it wants to be the main character of every drink that you put it in. And sometimes we don't want it to be the main character of every drink we put it in. In this case, it does a pretty good job of masking as a side character. It still tastes like that very cherry pit maraschino flavor, but I'm also getting the slight 
spice from the mole bitters that I used. I can also taste that kind of like sugary note from the rum. It's not quite sugar like powdered sugar. Um, not quite, it's, it's molasses -y in a way. It is definitely, it is very, if I had to pick a sugar form, it is more a molasses type of sugar, a dark sugar with something else going on in there too, um, as opposed to other types of sugars, like a white sugar or powdered sugar or something like that. I have had cocktails that taste like those. The names I can't quite bring to mind, but they definitely exist out there. This is very pleasant. It's a very, it feels like a sipper cocktail, one that you can kind of like go through and as it continues to come up to temperature, kind of pick apart a little bit more. Right now, I'm definitely getting those sugary notes. I'm getting those, um, those spicy chocolate notes, more so as it pertains to the bitter side of chocolate. This is not very milk chocolatey. It is not very like white chocolatey. It is very much that dark bitter part of chocolate that just kind of exists as a part of all cocos out there, but is never really the forefront unless you actually bite into like a piece of baking chocolate, which I've done. I like really, really dark chocolate. Um, and it's not even quite that either. There's there's less of a chocolatey sugariness there. I think the fact that the sugary notes that I am getting are more molassesy that doesn't pair, I guess in my experience, I've never really had chocolate and molasses before. So these are two flavor components that aren't mixing for me. I can taste them individually, which I guess like could be a good thing. Could be a bad thing. I don't really know. I don't really know. Wow. Also, that oh, Brad's out here giving me, helping me with the shoutouts and stuff. That's great. Oh, thank you, sir. I appreciate you greatly. You should be a mod. I'm gonna give you mod powers after this. You're very helpful. That is very tasty. Oh, I also know the last thing that I got. I just got a small note of. Oh, it's that. Oh, I can taste a little bit of that banana peel. I've never tasted banana in the Appleton before. And I think I'm getting that now. And there's also like a peach note. Just very slightly peach. Super slightly peach. And I'm relatively sure that's coming from the cognac. But that's not super prevalent at all. That just like hit me at the very like, on that, on that second sip. I guess to my point of before, this is kind of changing a little bit as it comes up to temperature. And it shit like it does, it does its thing and stuff. It evolves over time. And I think that's kind of cool. It's very tasty. That's dangerous. These are more my type of cocktails, a little less on the sweet side, more on the complexity, more on the evolution and stuff, and it also doesn't taste bad. Relatively balanced. I'll take that. I like the chocolate martica. That's good. I like that a lot. It's very good. I'll probably enjoy that one after the stream as I'm winding down and doing our obligatory editing and stuff before I go to sleep because it's like 10.30 over here. Brad says, oh man, this is a lot of power to give a person. I also like mod view because I can move the chat to the left as opposed to it all staying on the right hand side. It's stupid and wild. But alas, this is how we are. We are here. Uh, can I do that thing from here? Can I do that from here? I don't know what I'm doing. Click button. Click button. Ooh. Ooh. I have no idea. Yeah, we'll figure that out later. I can't seem to do that from here. I mean, I probably can do that from here. I'm just... Inept. Just a little bit. Oh, stop Twitch. Thank you so much. You can just slash mod. What? Oh my god. This man knows so much. That's why he deserves the power. There we go. We did it. <laughs> we did it. We got it. Congrats on your promotion. Here is a cheers in your honor. Welcome to the club. And I spilled the chocolate martica. Wow, that's an excellent drink, and I can't believe I spilled it on myself. I blame the mods. All right, so where do we find ourselves now? We are at more or less the end of what I have planned for this chocolate-themed cocktail stream. It kind of rhymed a little bit. I'm a big fan of that. The thing that I've been teasing the entire time has been this chocolate wash bourbon that I made this morning. It's been sitting in my freezer all day, and we're finally going to do something with it. Ben Tori is popping in here, an excellent beer reviewer and stuff. I've popped in for a number of his reviews and stuff. Hey, what's going on, dudes? We out here, be we're out of beer. What? We have some here? We do, actually. This is a cocktail called the beer. It's called the beer milkshake. It's got some chocolate stout in there, some creme de caco, some straight up chocolate ice cream. And there was something else. Oh, Hershey syrup. Duh. And it's absolutely delicious. Welcome to everybody over here. Welcome. We're making cocktails over here. Actually, you're popping in at probably just the best time because this is probably the most excited thing that I've been working on this evening. This is some chocolate washed bourbon that I just made this morning. I have very recently popped onto the train of fat washing and stuff. I've really never done it before, but I had some bacon washed bourbon that I tried a little bit. Don't yet know what to do with that. 
I appreciate recommendations, but we've got some chocolate, chocolate bourbon here that I really feel inclined to make a chocolate Manhattan with. So actually, while we're here, we're just gonna move right into that. Our next cocktail, possibly the last one of the evening, is going to be a chocolate Manhattan, except instead of just adding chocolate bitters to your Manhattan, we're also gonna use chocolate washed bourbon as the base for Manhattan. No, it's not a rye, but it's fine. We're making some creative liberties over here. We can do our Manhattans the any way that we want to. There's so many different ways to cocktail, so many different ways to Manhattan. If you're complaining, grab a drink or something. I'm sure you'll cool down a little bit. That's the thing. There are some like really interesting cocktail concepts that people just don't shut up about. And one is like the rye in your Manhattan or or to shake or not to stir your martinis and stuff. And it's so interesting how how people how vehement people get about that. I'd also like to welcome El Capitano and uh, Bentorius as they have taken their seats at the bar here. And Bentorius prime something? My goodness. <laughs> what an honor it is, sir. Thank you so much. So um, I didn't write Black Manhattan. Black Manhattan. It's not a Black Manhattan. I need to get myself some Averna over here. This is a chocolate Manhattan. Chocolate. As Dora the Explorer once said, bate, bate, chocolate. And I think that means stir the chocolate. Ma, ma, man, atom. Somebody complimented me on my chicken scratch earlier. It is an honor to be able to calligraphy for y'all this evening. Gotta support them drink, peeps. I appreciate that greatly. Yeah, for, for reference, everyone, for those on my side of things, Bentorius, another food and drink streamer. Go check him out. It's fun. It's cool. It's wonderful. So, we have the chocolate washed bourbon. Currently, the chocolate is a part of the bourbon. We need to do something about that. And as I'm very good at talking for long periods of time, we're going to strain at least a piece of this out over some coffee flip filters that I have so we can watch this thing separate. We only need two full ounces of our bourbon for the Manhattan that we're making this evening. But I will let this sit overnight and probably do some, uh, do one better over here. We actually have, Anna brought for me this really, really, really awesome dark chocolate block from Guatemala that I completely forgot was a thing. But when I, I only made this really small batch of chocolate washed bourbon and we'll continue to let it infuse overnight. When I do a bigger batch of this, I'm definitely going to use that chocolate because it's got those really awesome bitter tobacco, like very, very awesome notes that I personally love over here. That was great. Oh my god, a shower was given to Bentorius. Oh, that's our mods doing the work out there. It's great. You're like a Larix or Column adjacent. Oh, I really am getting my ego boost today. Thank you. So I'm going to need... I need another container to put this in. I'm going to grab the container that was very well holding back the very back-loaded martini frog thing glass over there. And essentially, I'm, I'm going to try this. I'm going to pop the cocktail angle over here and see whether or not we can do things the way that I want to. Um, I've never tried doing a little infusy thing here before. So I have my little container. I'll pop it over here, trying not to knock over the cocktail that we made earlier. There's so many different cocktails. Here we go. This is our pre-filter. I'm gonna grab ourselves a funnel over here. I'll pop that on the inside, put a little coffee strainer on in there. You could probably prepare this coffee strainer. That looks a little weird. Hello, everybody. Hello. There we go. Yeah, I'll move this a little bit. There we go, that's a little bit better. And essentially all I'm gonna do is I was gonna take the, what you could do, is if there was a thicker layer of fat up on top, there really isn't much fat on there. I don't know if y'all can see that very well. I'd scoop it off first, but I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just strain it. Just like that, as much as I possibly can. There is a lot of that very viscous chocolate happening here. That's cool. Also, I will mention, I've been so tempted to just take a sip of this all day long. I have held myself back from doing so because I wanted this to be authentic. This smells so good. It is that, Oh my god, it's chocolate and it's bourbon. Like, I've had... They sell bourbon, like, bourbon ice cream. And they sell chocolate ice cream. And I have most definitely had one scoop of bourbon and one scoop of ice, chocolate ice cream before. And it's such a, like, a sinful combination. I love the way that it tastes. And that's the way that this smells. It is those, like, very alcoholic flavors, I'd say. It's almost cherry-like. I'm getting, like, a weird, interesting chocolate cherry note from this. It is interesting. Classic combo. Underrated, to be honest. Yeah, and when you're, what is it? When you're 19 years old and you're ordering bourbon-flavored ice cream from the local ice cream joint, people tend to scratch their heads a bit and be like, you good? Like, you know what you're getting yourself into? And at that young age, the young, oh, the young age of 19, I was like, yeah, I think. This is taking a hot minute to strain. So, actually... 
Somebody made a suggestion for another cocktail earlier, and I think we're gonna do that cocktail first as this continues to strain out in the background. So because it's otherwise, like they kind of do look coffee-like. It's got a very nice dark color to it. This, the original, um, the original bourbon we were using was Old Grandad, I believe. So we're actually gonna let that sit for a little while, and we're gonna do this other one. So in the meantime, while we're kind of preparing our chocolate Manhattan, I'm gonna try a, I think it was a chocolate mint julep. I actually don't have a recipe for that. I did not uh, prepare it, but I think one of our, one of our members, I don't remember who it was. I apologize, it might've been Rye, said, ooh, chocolate mint julep. So I'm gonna look up a recipe for that real quick. We're just gonna make one, it'll be great. Brad says, those more Amaro-y, black Manhattan-y things are my jam, except don't give me the jam. Give him the black Manhattan. That's what the man asked for. If he wanted jam, he would have said, Black Manhattan Jam, please, which do I feel like, that? I don't know if they do make that. If they don't, then maybe they should. Chocolate mint julep. Chocolate mint julep, like chocolate mint. We did a mint chocolate one earlier. That's fun. Mint julep cocktail. Enjoy a mint julep drink today. No, I want a chocolate mint julep. A julep. Ooh, that's my brother's name. Chocolate mint julep recipe by Daniel Gritzer on Serious Eats. Why this recipe works. Crust ice chills the drink rapidly and keeps it cold. Creme de Caca delivers more than enough sweetness on its own, so no extra sugar is necessary. Thank you very much, Daniel. We greatly appreciate your contribution to the cocktail community. Chocolate mint julep recipe. Don't you love it when you have to scroll all the way to the bottom of the page? Some websites actually have like a jump to recipe button right at the top. It's great. 10 mint leaves. One and a half tablespoons of, why are you giving me? Oh, you give milliliters. I know to convert from that. Creme de Caco, bourbon rye whiskey, crushed or shaved ice, directions. Gently muddle mint leaves until lightly bruised and swab the glasses sides with the mint's aromatic oils. Add creme de cake bourbon or rye and stir well. Half filled with glass with crushed ice and serve to combine vial. Fill glass completely with crushed ice and stir until outside of glass. I heard crushed, crushed ice in there somewhere. Okay. Put on your glasses. Grab a Lewis bag. If you contain yourself. If you don't contain yourself, that's fine. Just go nuts. I need ice. I'm gonna grab that. What are you saying over here? Please enjoy your lurkage there, Le Capitano. I appreciate you popping in here. Ben says, this boomer works at the office tomorrow. Gotta run, but we should have catch more streams. This was great. Ben, Mr. Self-Proclaimed Boomer out there, I'm sure you're a lot lo younger than you give yourself credit for. Go get him, pal. You got it out there. I'm gonna grab some ice in the background while I continue to channel this, I suppose, foiled, not-so-boomer action. I don't consider myself to be much of a boomer, but I feel like I hang around with boomers enough, <clears throat> my father-in-law, to uh, to have a little bit rough rub off on me. He's a wonderful man. Mr. Joe is his name. He's great. So I'm just gonna take two big old ice cubes and just just bash the shit out of them. That's just that's just one way to do it. I know it's a hello emote, but I'm also kind of waving. Cheers and waves and all. That. Just take take that and run with it. My Lewis bag requires a wagon. So that's what I'm gonna do. You could use a mallet, or if you have a wrench that you found off the side of the street in Philadelphia and somehow continue to trust to use, you can also use that too. Warning, here come the sound effects. If you're feeling really chaotic, and although I don't recommend it, you could also use your glasses as crushed ice too. Well, that's a different kind of ice, and I'm not making an official recommendation on that. If you do it, I had nothing to do with it. There we go. In case the job doesn't get done with one wrench, I also have a bigger one. I'm not kidding. I'm not just stroking my ego over here. I'm gonna grab myself a glass and we're going to essentially build the cocktail, I believe over top of the glass, right? No, 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 I have instruction over here. Gotta do the cooking by the book. Julep cup or large rocks glass. Don't have a julep cup. Gently muddle the leaves. Oh, gently. All right, then swap the glass aside with the mint aromatic oils. All right, we'll start there. I'm gonna grab myself a glass. I do not have a julep glass. However, I'm gonna try my best to utilize whatever we have over here and just go for it. We'll pop a cocktail angle down here a little bit. It can really be an angle for anything. It doesn't necessarily have to be cocktails. In the background, our, uh, our chocolate washed bourbon is straining out quite nicely. <coughs> Excuse me. Here's our glass. I'm gonna grab, honestly, I don't know what else I'm gonna use this mint on. So I'm just gonna take the rest of the mint that I bought from Giant this evening, and I'm just gonna, oh, actually, that might be too much mint. We'll save some for the garnish. 
some for the garnish. We'll take a number of leaves, kind of put them in there. This recipe says, I think it was 10 to 12 leaves, I believe. I'll just like completely, what's the term you use? Trim, I'm gonna trim these ones. I'm gonna trim these guys in the leaves. That feels adequate. There we go, we'll pop those over in there. And I got a little bit more leaves for our garnish which is great. I'll pop these guys back in our container so we can preserve them for later. More Than Awesome says, I feel like with mint juleps, there's always more mint than you expect. Honestly, that's good. So now we gotta muddle these so we can grab our handy dandy muddler and just kind of gently, with as much poise as possible, bruise these leaves. That's all we're doing. We're not trying to discipline them or anything. Just give them a little bruise. Just enough so that they remember. Remember. I'd say that's lightly bruised. Now what do we do? Then we swab the glass's sides with the mint's, arom the mint's aromatic oils. Daniel, you have done a great job of making me want to put these oils on my face because I've heard aromatic oils and other essential oils are very good for my complexion. Um, that just might be the, what was it? If, if Ben's the, the, the boomer, I can, I can be the zillennial. I'll be the zillennial. I, I don't even know what I am anymore. I was born in 97. What does that make me? Somebody, somebody tell me. I don't know. There we go. We got some oils in there. Add creme de caco and bourbon or rye and stir well. Stir well. Half fill the glass with crushed ice. Stir well in what, Daniel? You don't give me the instructions. I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna add the creme de caco and bourbon and or rye and stir well into this glass. That's what Daniel is telling me to do. And who am I to fight with Daniel? Daniel is clearly the pinnacle of knowledge on this one. I need some bourbon. So I think because I'm about to utilize some old granddad bourbon, I'm gonna go with these guys. I'm gonna go with that again. Bourbon straight whiskey. It's a bottled and bond, so it's gonna be a bit higher proof, if not significantly higher proof. So we'll use that. I need two full ounces of our bourbon or rye whiskey. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go for the rye on this one. I have, I, I, I struggle to utilize bottles when they are low. Um, I have only a little bit left of my Rittenhouse rye. I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna go for it. This feels like it was worth it. Brad says, I was born in 81. It makes me a baby. I'll take that. I'm, I'm hoping to stay young forever, but isn't that everybody's goal? If I have two full ounces to give, which I do, of our Rittenhouse Rye Bottled and Bond. We'll add that into our makeshift julep cup. This is all I got, so that's what we're going to use. I still have more of it left, which is great, because I am definitely going to use it later on. Not later on tonight. Later on, like, eventually. Next, we're gonna add one and a half tablespoons, or like 22 milliliters of creme de caco. Uh, 22 milliliters to me is three quarters of an ounce. So, I'm gonna add three quarters of an ounce. It pays to know your metric conversion, but don't worry. Don't worry. I know so that you don't have to, or at least some of them. Math is difficult sometimes. So we've added our creme de caco, we've added our bourbon in there. That's the chocolate part of the chocolate mint julep in this case. Impromptu recipe, isn't this fun? Thank you for the contributions from our wonderful community members who give me ideas when I otherwise can't come up with them. Now that we've added our creme de caco and our rye or bourbon whiskey to our glass and our mint, we're going to stir it well. I'm stirring it so well that some of the mints are hanging high. Oh, I'm kind of spilling a little everywhere too. When you tell me to stir well, I'm not going to be gentle about it. Come on, Daniel. Mmm. It's minty and rifle. All right, now we're going to half fill the glass with crushed ice and also stir to combine. So we're going to stir this twice. This is your fault, Daniel. Listen, listen, Brad, we gotta be a little easier on Daniel over here. I'm sure he gets paid for this, for this, and so long as he earns his commission, I don't think, I don't think Daniel's complaining. So I like half filled it with ice. And now we're gonna stir it again. This is how our juleps be. Oh, that's such a nice sound to it. I've never had a mint julep before. This is gonna be great. Or, or could very well ruin my impressions of mint juleps forever. Listen, no, says, says Rat. I, I have a sword. I will keep Daniel on task. Dude. Wow. 
The mods are getting rowdy up in here. Now that we've stirred it again, fill the glass completely with crushed ice and stir until the outside of glass frosts. Add more crushed ice, heaping generously, then garnish with sprigs of fresh mint. Do I not add more stuff to this? Is that it? That is all. I'll add more crushed ice. As much more crushed ice as I can muster. Absolute power, man. Absolute power. This is what I've done. Gosh. The people that we trust. The people that we trust in this world. I trust Brad. I trust. I trust. I trust. Yield MTA. All right. Get him. Get him. Get him. Okay. Yeah, that's crushed ice. Y'all couldn't see that, but ah, magic. It's as filled with crushed ice as I want it to be. And um, now we're going to garnish it with those other mint sprigs that we had from earlier. I'm going to use all of them. It's very mint. It's very julep. It's a <laughs> kind of looks shitty. Wow. There we go. That's a damn. Oh, damn. That's a mint julep if I've ever seen it. Or at least I think it is. There we go. How does that look from my angle? <laughs> these mint leaves are so wild. These these mint leaves were not expecting to go out this morning. This was a fire drill at two, a fire drill at six a.m. while you're still in college kind of a thing. There, um, I definitely could have packed that ice a little bit better. But this is what we have, and I love the way that mint leaf looks, at least from my angle. So good stuff over here. MTA is a good boy, despite the absolute power that he wields. This is our mint julep. I'm gonna put a little straw on there because I don't really feel like getting my face all up in the ice today. That's just not really my style. Let's go for it. I got a little golden straw over here. That seems to fit with the julep action as our, this is this chocolate washed, uh, whiskey, uh, whoa. The chocolate washed bourbon is taking a while over there. I think we may have about two ounces. We'll get to it. That'll be the last thing that we do. And then I'm out of here for the evening. Our mint julep, ladies, and gentlemen, and those far in between and beyond. That kind of just tastes like creme de cacao and bourbon with just or rye whiskey with a little bit of mint air to it. I'm relatively certain that other recipes that I've seen for mint juleps add some sort of sweetening agent to it. So I'm gonna add a little bit of simple syrup to this. Actually, the syrup that I grabbed first was Demerara syrup. So I'm gonna add a little bit of Demerara syrup to this. There's something about that that just doesn't doesn't vibe super well. No offense to Daniel, but this just kind of ain't doing it for Cameron over here. And a little bit of Demerara sugar, sort of syrup. I'd say I added like quarter of an ounce so far. Let's see if that does anything. It's very, it's it's very rye, and it is very kind of cocoa with a little bit of mint. And if that's your thing, then all right. But. Kind of getting there. I'd much rather like, I think the reason why I haven't done a mint julep before is because I feel like I have better recipes for it than this. Uh, then again, I just picked the first one off the page. So sometimes we have some wins around here. Sometimes we have some losses. It's all about learning, trying to get something away from this. Yeah, it's, it's kind of sweet, kind of minty, kind of chocolatey, very vaguely. Very prominently right. Very spicy in Miami. Yeah, if we did something else, it probably would taste a little bit different. Anyway, I think that was a good enough stall for um for whatever the, the main topic of the show, which was that chocolate washed bourbon that we have. We made a mint julep. Finally, my first one. It can definitely be done better. What are you on top? Oh, more ice. Oh, I lost a coaster. I flung it right off the bar. That's great. All right, we'll try that once more. <laughs> All right, so we just made a chocolate mint julep. I guess. Now we're on to the chocolate Manhattan. I'm really excited for this one. Essentially, what we're doing is your regular Manhattan, for the purposes of this show here, is going to be two ounces of whiskey. It could be rye, it could be bourbon, it could really be whatever you want to. The pros recommend a rye. 
Two ounces are about 60, 59-ish milliliters of that, combined with one ounce of your sweet vermouth. I know there's probably other ways to do your Manhattan. You just do it the way that you want to. What we're specifically doing here is instead of adding Angostura bitters, we're gonna add some cocoa bitters, and instead of using just regular whiskey or rye or otherwise, we're gonna use chocolate washed bourbon whiskey rye or otherwise um, in place of that to see if we can kind of bolster those chocolate flavors a little bit more. I've never tried it before. This is the first time we're gonna try it, so we'll see how that goes. What I'm gonna try to do is add two full ounces. Let me grab the, grab the cocktail angle over here so everybody can see what's going on as we mix inside of our mixing glass. Up you this way. There we go. All right, cool. We'll grab a, what do you call these things that are cubical and made of ice? Ah. Ice cylinders. One of those guys. That's obviously what they're called. And we're gonna add, so long as we have enough of it, two full ounces of our chocolate washed bourbon. This is a very thick chocolate. I used Ghirardelli, I believe. So evidently, it's taken a really sweet time to strain out. Um, I don't know if I have a full two ounces. We're gonna try. If I do, awesome. If not, I will scale the recipe down accordingly. I have a bit under an ounce and a half. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale this recipe down because I don't have all that we have yet. Just a, it's just a teaser. It's a teaser recipe. This is about... I'd say this is the equivalent of like a heavy ounce of chocolate-washed bourbon. It has a beautiful color to it. And the way that this tastes, I'm going to taste it now because... Wow, that is so rich. Ooh, that is so good. That is so... The sugars are in there, the chocolate's in there. This basically tastes like you somehow like completely dissolved the chocolate candy thing into the bourbon. It's so chocolatey. It's got such a sweetness to it. This is gonna be, um, actually, this might even work out a little bit, maybe. I feel like you'd wanna actually dial back a bit on your sweet vermouth for this thing. That is a really tasty looking bourbon, as far as bourbons goes. This is great. Next, we're gonna add, if I used a heavy ounce of our chocolate washed bourbon, I'm going to use a heavy half an ounce of our sweet vermouth, which is going to be Carpema Antica. If I'm going to experiment with it, I'm going to experiment with something I'm familiar with, and that's going to be our Carpano Antica Fumina. Let's see, a heavy, heavy half an ounce. So I'm going to make that almost three quarters. Yeah, that feels about right. There we go. And I'm going to grab my preserver. <laughs> my life preserver, no silly, my wine preserver to be able to preserve my vermouth for the next time. Nope. Evidently, I popped a little straw off. That's cute. It happens every once in a while. Sometimes we have mishaps. That's the beauty of live television. So now, what we're going to do afterwards is we're going to add our chocolate bitters. You can add anywhere between two or even one, to a million dashes of whatever you want to use in that. Uh, I, for one, like things heavy on the bitters. I've got these Woodford Reserve barrel-aged chocolate bitters. I like these, and I think these are going to go very, very well in here. Otherwise, I would probably use either a Mole bitters if you have those around. You could probably... I also... I randomly picked up this bottle of Turkish tobacco bitters the other day. I don't know how to use it, but I feel like that would honestly go well here. Just the slightest bit. Bitterman's bitters to me are a little on the sweeter side. So if you're something that's if you're somebody who likes things a little more short, then this might be the way to go or otherwise. I'm gonna add like one full droplet and a half. One full pipette and a half. It's a lot of it's a lot of bitters. I put a lot of bitters in there, but I'll go with that. Tobacco would go great in this. So actually, the reason why one of the reasons I'm not using the tobacco bitters here is because when I do the full batch of the um, of the chocolate washed bourbon, I am most definitely going to use this block of chocolate, which I left over here. This is the block of chocolate I'm talking about. It came from Guatemala. And I would use that because to me, it actually has notes of tobacco in it. And I feel like that would go super duper 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 well. Um, but that's not prepared. So I will do that another time. So let's stir this. And then we'll straight into a glass. It's not going to be exactly the right proportions. I'm aware of that. Um, but this thing is still going. I'm going to let this sit. I'm going to let this sit. Um, probably in an encased surface so that nobody gets to it because there's a lot of chocolate there's so much like there is a huge amount of chocolate 
that is left in there. It is completely like your. Let me check it out. The chocolate is like sand dunes in there. It is. Oh, get out of here, you silly straw. Silly julep trying to be a part of the party. It is so duny in there. There are such dunes. That is cool looking. So that will sit. That will sit until uh, until we're ready to do something with it. I'm gonna grab. I have another chilled coupe glass, so I'm gonna grab a chilled coupe glass. You could add. Wow, that tastes good. Holy shit. That is so chocolatey. Wow, I didn't spoil it. I'm gonna grab chilled coupe glass. It's not gonna fill up all the way to the top. You could probably put a cherry on this. I'm not going to. I don't want to. This is mine. I do want to eat with that spoon. Everybody wants to. I'm gonna do the cheap way of straining, where I'm gonna do this and just block the ice cube. There we go. This is our very... Oh, look at that. That's a weird angle. Hello. That's a little bit better. This is our chocolate Manhattan. I think the way that the world intended a chocolate Manhattan to be. If you're going to call it... Again, this is this is my inexperienced opinion here, but I feel like if you're gonna call something a chocolate something, you're gonna chocolify that drink as much as you possibly can. Now, to my own point, working against myself, by that logic, we would have also chocolatified the vermouth and chocolatified everything. You might as well just take a Manhattan, put it, do the whole process you did while fat washing the bourbon, and just fat wash the Manhattan. Which, I guess, to that point, you know, there's many different ways to play. This is my way of playing. This is cool. It's such a dark color. This is actually even more a dark color than the Black Manhattan that we made last week. Also, I've tasted this spoon a number of times already, and I know what's coming. Cheers. Wow. Somehow, this combines the Manhattan notes of like those cherry notes from the sweet vermouth, those kind of vanilla cask and weeded notes of the bourbon. I believe Old Granddad is a high rye one, so there's a bit of spice there. There is a spiciness to this that I feel like is coming straight from the chocolate, which was this Ghirardelli, 60% bitter chocolate. We also added the cocoa bitters in there. And then also the the, the high rye bourbon bottle and bond whiskey. This tastes so cool. This is like perfectly combining those flavors of deep dark chocolate, which I love. If you're a milk chocolate person, this is probably not the way that you want to go. You could probably infuse it with some melted Hershey chocolate and probably get something that is more akin to your flavors. I will say this is a little unbalanced. It's so chocolatey. It is very, very chocolatey and very, very sweet for as far as a Manhattan goes, at least for me. There, there could have been less, I guess less sweet vermouth, probably. But even, you could have also did less of the bourbon. Like, to balance this out, I feel like you need to add something else there to dilute the sweetness of the sweet vermouth and the chocolate-washed bourbon. Even something insofar as adding just more bitters on top of it, or adding a little bit of dilution, maybe, or adding a different base spirit in there entirely, like a tequila or a gin, or even just a vodka, to balance things out a little bit and make it a little less potent. It is potently chocolate. It's potently Manhattan. It's delightful. It's delicious. But it is so definitely chocolate. Like, I, there's no way around it. This tastes like an alcoholic chocolate bar that's been completely liquefied and is delicious. It just doesn't have the same viscosity as melted chocolate. You could warm this up and it would taste like hot chocolate. It's that, it's, ooh, it's that, like, what's the word for it? It's that rich, it's that rich of a flavor. Super tasty. It's exactly, it's dessert. Just throw a little, like, chainar or fernet in there. Not a lot, just like a little bar spoon of it. Just to add a little bit of bitterness to it. I feel like, like, even adding the, um, you could probably, there's, there's so many different ways to go about doing this, and, like, I could not possibly cover them all here, otherwise, 
I don't know, we'd be here forever, and I'd be just drinking the same drink on and on, and then it'll be just nothing but bur uh, but bitters and stuff. But I feel like there's so many different angles you can go with this. I'm taking a step back a little bit to look at the entire bottle bar that I have before me. I feel like if you added one, this add something differently sweet to it, but make it even sweeter. Like if this is not sweet enough for you, I feel like adding like a velvet falernum to this is gonna give a totally different angle to this. If you wanted something a little more on the bitter side, you could probably add like like Campari if you wanted to it. If you wanted to add like, cause chocolate and orange go really well together and the Campari notes are going to add a subtle sweetness to it, but also a big bitter note to it. You can just add more bitters to it. This would probably go great with orange bitters and stuff. I would even imagine this might even go well with like, Try and think, what else do we got back here? Cinnamon whiskey, cinnamon cinnamon chocolate go well together. That would probably be pretty good. Or even something like, I would even see like absinthe maybe going a little low on this. Just, just a little bit. Godiva. Actually, Godiva. You could add more Godiva chocolate. What are you talking about? I have no idea. You were just naming things that went well with chocolate. This is so chocolatey. Anna standing off screen. This is so chocolatey. You're not going to like this, but this is so chocolatey. No, you did it with bourbon, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't like bourbon. I'll smell it. It's so tasty. Would you like to smell it? That smells like alcohol. <laughs> I was going to say, if you wanted it to be even more sweet. It does smell sweet, like chocolate, though. It's very chocolate. Yeah. yeah. It's very good. I like what that very much. What chocolate did you use on that? Uh, the 60% cocoa by Ghirardelli. Yeah, it smells like It smells like Disney good. World. Disney Springs. Just a little bit. Yeah, but they stopped giving out the Ghirardelli yeah. chocolate. So sad, Disney, you cheapskates. Well, actually, no. That's just Ghirardelli. Very sad stuff. Brad says Falernum, yeah. For not being the random knee jerk, he was saying before the knee jerk answer, but specifically Branca Menta. Oh, of course, mint and chocolate go well together. You could add something minty in there, a little bit of creme de menthe. You could add so, like a mojito liqueur in there. You could add something like, um, like there's a mojito liqueur by Don Q that's a little limey and it's a little minty. That might be a bit too far, but there are so many things that you could do with this particular recipe here. This feels, and the reason why my mind is going on this tangent of different things you could do to it, it feels incomplete. It feels like we have cracked the code on chocolate for the Manhattan by chocolate washing your bourbon. But what's next? There has to be a next step. And I honestly don't know what that next step is. I leave that open-ended, very open-ended for any of the other blossoming mixologists and stuff out there. Let me know. You can drop them here. I am also reachable via DM on Discord and otherwise. Brad also says, I feel like the weird licorice notes in the green would, uh, the green, uh, the green chartreuse would cut out the choco notes, but in the wrong way. The world may never know. There are so many different things to do. I'm going to quickly round up exactly what we covered this evening. Everything, in case I miss a couple of notes here or there, are going to be covered in our cocktail blog, which I have up on Discord. And I have every every recipe that we cover in the description of the VOD that comes out after this. I've also done a little bit. I tried to add a kind of audio narration of the blog that comes afterwards, which you can find on TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram. I That was just a random thing I tried doing. I have no idea if I'm going to keep doing it. It takes a little bit of effort. Effort. But um, you can find it there as well. What we've done this evening so far is we first started off with an espresso, a Ferrero Rocher espresso martini. We combined whipped vodka. You can also use vanilla vodka. That's what it recommends. You can combine hazelnut liqueur. Uh, I use a pecan liqueur, premium liqueur specifically, with your. I think a little bit of. We had the vodka in there. Let me just let me just go to the page. Get myself lost in my descriptions over here. The Ferrer Rocher Espresso Martini, which I completely finished throughout this stream, it's just so damn good and has evidently caffeinated me to the point where I'm still awake, uh, is made with your vanilla vodka or whipped vodka, your Frangelico hazelnut liqueur or your pecan liqueur, which we use, your Godiva chocolate liqueur, specifically the milk chocolate one, as well as some fresh Italian espresso. Um, I did make some fresh espresso, and I do happen to be at least part Italian, so in that way it's fresh Italian espresso, but it did not come from Italy, unfortunately. Next, what we did is we moved on to the more kind of other notes of chocolate. Like when I think of chocolate, I think of chocolate milk. This drink over here, the Dwarven Delight from the board game uh, Heroes of Barcad Barcadia is essentially vodka, chocolate liqueur, milk, and chocolate syrup. You essentially took chocolate milk and you made it alcoholic by putting some vodka in it. Very simple thing to do. Taste pretty much like chocolate milk. There's really no other way around it. It's not even that alcoholic tasting, to be honest. It is something that will go under the radar. But if your drink of choice is milk or chocolate milk at the game table, that's the place to go. If you don't want to kind of boost things up a little bit more. Next, we moved on to, I think, 
I think the next thing we did was this mint chocolate drink over here. It is a very simple cocktail combining three full ounces of mint chocolate whiskey, specifically the Old Smoky brand, with half an ounce of creme de coconut, cream of coconut, not creme de coconut, cream of coconut. I bought it from the store, you shake it, you pour it into a container, you garnish it with a little bit of mint there. It's very simple, and it's called coconut mint chip. It is exactly what it sounds like. Coconut and mint chip. Although we did have discussions of whether it would be a coconut mint chip uh, during the stream earlier. Um, you can rewind for that or watch the VOD. It was a very interesting discussion. Imagine either coconuts on mint plants or I guess green coconuts on regular coconut trees. Ah, but I reminisce and I digress. We moved on from there to this multi-layer drink over here, which does actually still have a lot of its layers still here. This one was called the Vanilla Rose and White Chocolate Cocktail. Essentially, we took rose syrup and added like a half an ounce of it on the bottom. I had rhubarb and rose syrup, which I think played into a little bit of curdling that happened to the mixture up on top, which was made with tequila, um, specifically a reposado in our case, Patron, with some white chocolate liqueur, specifically Godiva. That's a combination that I've never had before. I never experienced prior to this week, white chocolate liqueur and tequila together. And that is such an interesting combination. It takes all of the boozy notes of the tequila and mellows the amount such that you can taste the tequila over top of the white chocolate. And when you take a deep enough sip, you get those rose notes, those floral rose and slightly tart rhubarb notes from the syrup that's down below. Um, I use the rhubarb, I use rhubarb and rose syrup that I got from a book called Wild Cocktails, I believe, by Emily Hahn. It's a very good book. I haven't gotten through the whole thing, but that's where I found that particular recipe for the rhubarb and rose syrup that I used that you can make yourself. It's got a very nice color to it. I think I did a couple of short videos on that too. And we'd also made a, a, an appearance last week when I covered the Pink Amelico cocktail. So after that one, let's see, what do we do? We went to this number back here, which is called the Beer Milkshake. A, the Beer Milkshake is essentially an entire container of chocolate stout. We utilized Trogue's chocolate stout because I could find it at the store at my local giant. You combine that with a bit of uh, Dutch chocolate or just regular chocolate ice cream, a little bit of creme de cacao, and a bit of a heaping swab of Hershey's chocolate syrup or whatever chocolate syrup that you happen to have on hand. Blend that all together, put some whipped cream on it, put a maraschino cherry on it, and you basically just have a boozy milkshake, which has those sour, bitter notes that are very prevalent from the chocolate stout that you used inside of it. When I used an entire bottle of it and did the proportions that I will share later on uh, in the descriptions and stuff, you will get about one and a half milkshakes from that, but you can scale it up to pretty much as much as you want to. Just a quick note on the cost there, creme de cacao is pretty cheap. Um, chocolate ice cream is pretty cheap. Hershey syrup is on the cheaper side, I guess relative to what you're getting from it, it's a little more expensive, a little bougie, but you can use any type of chocolate syrup. And I will say that at least the chocolate stout that I used at Trogues was like 12 bucks for six bottles. So that is a quick chocolatey and boozy way to get your milkshake on. It's, it's very good. Actually, I think uh, aside from the espresso martini, that was my drink of the night. My straw is broken, so I can't actually take any more sips of that. These straws are, these paper straws are, what, oh my God something going on there with that straw anyways <laughs> moving on we had the next cocktail that we did is we made oh this guy over here that was the chocolate martica the chocolate martica is a it's not necessarily a chocolate drink it uses chocolate or chocolate adjacent bitters specifically a cocoa bitters uh, uh mole bitters specifically and that martica combined some cognac Jamaican rum, sweet vermouth, and a little bit of maraschino. It's got that classic cocktail vibe to it, something that you can definitely enjoy. It has those very nice spice notes from the mole bitters that were created by another cocktail creator named Colorado 12. I would recommend checking them out. Um, and those kind of fruity notes from the brandy. There was a little funky banana note from the Jamaican rum. It was. It had a lot to unpack. I think that evolved over time as it got a little bit warmer. That's probably what I'm going to be enjoying as I do a little bit of editing after this stream is over. Next, we uh, I talked about how I had some chocolate washed bourbon. I had never done uh, fat washing before. I did a little bit of bacon fat washing for some bourbon that I had for roses specifically, and I don't know what to do with it yet. So I'd appreciate any suggestions there because I have. I haven't figured out anything for it yet. Maybe I'll do an entire episode on fat washing in general, especially with meats. I know our friend Larix is very, uh, is evidently labeled the the meat the meat cocktail uh, extraordinaire. I don't know what the context is behind that, but uh, I might have to ask him about that. Um, but so we had some chocolate washed bourbon uh, that we made into a black Manhattan. It's a, or, black Manhattan. 
Chocolate Manhattan. It took a little while for us to get there because I literally just strained it out during the stream and it is still straining. So in the meantime, we made a chocolate mint julep according to, what was that website that we used? According to, uh, seriouseats.com by Daniel. It's all right. It tastes like bourbon and a little bit of chocolate and a little bit of mint. It's fine. It's definitely not the best mint julep I've had. It's the only mint julep I've had. But even as far as mint juleps go, as far as bourbon and mint go, I feel like there must be more. More sweetness, perhaps. I don't know. I'll find my whole review later on. And then we finally made the chocolate Manhattan here. The chocolate Manhattan that we utilized chocolate washed bourbon and chocolate bitters and sweet vermouth. It is so richly chocolate. And I feel like there's another step to this that I just don't know what it is this doesn't feel like this chocolate manhattan here does not feel like the final step it feels like there is something else to be added to it and i think it is a very multi-path and multi-tree branched like like story here i don't know exactly what you would add to this and i will provide the entire base recipe i'm very curious to see what all the other folks out there the mixologists or even those who don't even call themselves bartenders or mixologists would do with this I'm curious, and I like this kind of open dialogue thing that we have. So I will put it out there for the world, and if you so choose to take that challenge upon you, I look forward to how you will do it. In any case, that was everything that we covered. And so, I leave you with a couple of final thoughts. Those final thoughts being, thanks for popping along. This was fun. I really like this. This was kind of a, a last minute thing that I kind of put together, despite the fact that we had all these things for here. I had something else planned for this week. There's some really cool stuff coming to the bar with the next, so I encourage you to stick around if you're uh, you're popping in here for a little bit longer. Um, in any case, I'll be back here again next Wednesday uh, for something completely different, a completely different theme than what we have here. May maybe it'll be chocolate related? No, probably not. It'll be something completely different. I gotta figure that out. Or maybe I have figured it out already, and I'm just not revealing what it is. Ah. Suspense. In any case, you can find us here on Wednesdays at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Wednesdays. I said Wednesdays twice. In any case, that's all I've got for y'all this evening, and I appreciate y'all for coming along. The Bar of the Next, we'll see you again next time. But until then, if the moon is shining where you are, and it's nighttime like it is for me, then may the moon guide you to whatever your next venture for the night is. If you're like a graveyard shift worker, I'd recommend this espresso martini. It's It might be what you need. To, uh, to wake yourself up for the evening that lies ahead. If it's the if the sun is shining where you are and it is actually the morning in your time zone, then good morning. May this espresso also serve you well. No matter where you are in the world, if you're a coffee drinker, this will serve you well. If you're a drinker drinker, we've got at least three to four other options for you. And if you're not into any of that stuff, that's all right. Take this smile and this positive energy. And I hope it serves you very well. Until next week, y'all. Until anything, or unless anything else that we're doing. I don't know. I stream games sometimes too. That's kind of sporadic. Life's weird with a nine-to-five job, especially at a startup. It's wild. But in any case, you didn't ask, and that's okay. Thanks all for joining me. I appreciate it greatly. Have a wonderful time, everybody. Until next time, y'all. Bye.